National Football League. We're in the magnificent city of Chicago, Illinois, beset with cup fever right now. The Chicago Bears play at Soldier Field. They are three and one. They are led by one of the great runners of all time, Walter Payton, chasing Jim Brown and about to catch him just 221 yards away. Another great runner in presence, too, Tony Dorsett of the Dallas Cowboys, number six on the all-time rushing list. It's teacher against pupil, Tom Landry on the left, Mike Ditka on the right, the head man of the Chicago Bears, Landry's assistant for a long, long time. The first meeting between the two, it's the Dallas Cowboys against the Chicago Bears. Good afternoon, I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden. We talked with Tom Landry last night about what he thinks he has to do to beat the Bears, and what did he say, John? You know, Tom was saying that he, he has a lot of confidence in his defense now. In fact, they're number two in the NFL, and he said they're probably playing better than they have in the last five or six years. He's still worried about his offense in general, but more specifically the running game. They're only averaging 3.5 per run. He feels to be a good running team, you have to average 4.3, and he says, until we get that going, and we want to today, he said, but until we do, we're not a good offensive team. Mike Ditka, the head coach of the Bears, of course, is very familiar with the Dallas system. And what, is, you know, what do you think he has to do? Well, of course, he's also very confident in his defense. They're number one in the NFL, and he's worried about his offense, but for a different reason. He's worried about his passing offense. His quarterback, Jim McMahon, didn't play last week, only played a half the week before against Green Bay, has a broken right hand and a bad back. So he says he thinks he's ready today, but we're going to have to wait and see until he gets that first hit. And the first hit will occur in just a minute as the Bears will kick it off to the Cowboys. Back deep for Dallas. Gary Allen will be number 31. Chuck McSwain also back there, number 35. So it's Allen and McSwain, the two, and Bob Thomas will kick off for the Bears, number 16. He hasn't been kicking off too deep. But the Bears have been doing a good job covering. So Thomas hits it high this time. It's Gary Allen at the three. Allen to the right side. A little bit of room. He's picked up right at the 20-yard line. Let's check the lineups. Dallas Cowboys offensive backs and receivers. Hogaboom, Dorsett and Springs, Renfro and Donnelly, the wide receivers. Up front, it's Cosby at tight end. Paz Derrick, Herbert Scott, Rafferty, Kurt Peterson, and Jim Cooper. Gary Hogaboom, the quarterback. A little bit battered. Bad right wrist and a bad elbow. But nonetheless, he's got that starting job and he's going to hang in there to keep it. Ball's at the 20-yard line. Hogaboom to Dorsett. Looking for some room. Can't find it. Dorsett spins around and gets about three when it looked like it might be nothing. Let's look at that bear defense. Hartenstein, Steve McMichael. Dan Hampton playing with a bad knee and Tyrone Keyes. That's the front four. The linebackers, the number one draft choice, Wilbur Marshall. Singletary in the middle and Al Harris, the other linebacker. In the secondary, and it's a good one. Richardson and Frazier, the corners, Bell and Fentick, the safeties. Second and seven for the Dallas Cowboys. Door set about nine yards deep, takes the pitch back. Down for a loss of about five. Mike Hartenstein took him down. There was some doubt about whether or not he'd be able to play because of a torn rib cartilage. He has played in 136 straight. And that streak is going to continue. Chicago defense this year, first against the rush, first against the pass, first overall, and that's in the NFL. Third down. As good as you can get, isn't yep. it? Third and 12. Donnelly and Renfro both split wide to the left. Out of the shotgun is Hogaboom. Incomplete. The Bear defense does its duty. Pass was intended for Donnelly, badly underthrown. Mike Richardson on the coverage, and we'll look at Danny White, the punter, as Hogaboom walks off. Tom Landry was very frank last night talking to us, saying, you're not going to take the ball and move it downfield against this Bear defense. You've got to get some breaks. You've got to put them in position, a bad position by kicking. And you also have to get a big play. The other thing he says you have to have is patience. I always had a little trouble with that one. Jeff 
Fisher is deep as Danny White gets off a good punt. The Bears are going to have it in pretty good shape, though. Well, maybe not. The Cowboys try to scoop it up. Now they scramble. This is the kind of thing we were just talking about. I don't know who came up with it. Bill Bates just activated it yesterday. Made the hit that knocked the ball loose. Bates back. Back to the bang. You can say whatever you want about the Hoga Booms and the Whites and the Donnellys, but you need guys like Bill Bates on there. And the Cowboys have missed Bates. Just got him back. He hurt his hip in the... Uh, in training camp, missed the whole season. Here's his first game. Got, look at him. He went right in that tackle and hit the ball. Knocked the ball right out, and the Cowboys got it. That's the other thing Landry was saying. He said, we can't really move the ball, but we have to get some big plays, maybe even on special teams. When we asked him if Bates was going to play, he just laughed and said, you bet. You better believe it. Dorsett and Newsom, the two running backs. The fake is to Dorsett. It's out to Newsom and it's over his head. Newsom had a little bit of daylight, but the Bears reacted. Brian Cabral. That was a good call by Tom Landry. You know, last week, the Cowboys had 33 first downs and they ran 25 of them. They started out today in the first down and ran first down. On that play, they ran a play fake. You know, make the defense think you're going to run. Then they went back to pass. It didn't work, but it was still a good call. Make them think a little bit. Throw off those computers. Though. Out of the shotgun, a handoff Dorsett. Dorsett bounced off a couple of tacklers, didn't get much. So it'll be third down. Tyrone Keys made the hit that brought Dorsett down. Mike Ditka over on the sideline, in shirt and tie. Well, I know what he's thinking, too. You know, they had that last week against Seattle in their first loss. They had a lot of turnovers. And here, you know, he was saying yesterday, against the Cowboys, you have to play air-free football. He said, we can't have those turnovers. And what happens the first time they punt to him? Boom, ball's laying on the ground. Third and nine. The ball's at the bare 21-yard line. No score as yet. Okafum from the shotgun. Flag is down. Not sure what this might be. Start. Ball start against the Cowboys. Pretty one in. The ex West Virginia and Redskin quarterback is the referee today. Those ex quarterbacks make good referees. Well, Freddie Wyant has had some pretty choice assignments, so they must. Of course, he's left handed. Third and 14. Maybe Kenny Stable will be a referee someday. Can you see that? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was on the Cowboy uh, left tackle, Bill Posderick, who moved before the ball was snapped. Trying to get back there and pass protection a little early. Out of the shotgun. Again is Hogaboom. Newsom comes in motion. Hogaboom. With time for Renfro. And again, the Bear defense does its job. Leslie Frazier, one of the two fine cornerbacks they possess on the coverage. I think that's one of the things, excuse me, Pat, that the Bears have really uh, improved on of those two cornerbacks, Leslie Frazier and Mike Richardson. They have two corners that can cover man to man. Therefore, they can blitz a lot more. And on that time, it was Frazier against Renfro, and he had him step for step. Raphael Septien from between 44, 45 yards out with Gary Hogaboom holding. He is seven out of eight. He is eight out of nine from 44 yards officially. And the Cowboys break on top after Bill Bates causes a fumble. They get a field goal. 3 nothing, Dallas. We're talking about the two Chicago cornerbacks, Frazier and Richardson. One of the most remarkable athletic plays we've ever seen was two weeks ago. Watch Frazier against Green Bay. This is something. 83 is John Jefferson of the Packers. But watch Frazier come over the top, catch that ball in an interception, and not touch Jefferson. I think that was probably the greatest interception that I've ever seen. Leslie Frazier had a lot of problems with pulled muscles, hamstrings, 
early in his career. That seems to be all solved. As Septien hangs it high. It's Dennis Gentry at about the 12. Still on his feet is Gentry. He gets out to about the 27, 28 yard line before Bill Bates makes the tackle. The Chicago offense, Jim McMahon is the quarterback. Matt Suey and Peyton the runners, Willie Galt and Dennis McKinnon, the wide receivers. Up front, it's Saldi at tight end, the ex-Cowboy. Jim Covert, Ports, Jay Hilgenberg at center, Kurt Becker the right guard, and Keith Van Horn at right tackle. Ports is going to have his hands full today with Randy White, isn't it? That's a big key to the game. I think if Mark Ports, the left guard of the Bears, can block Randy White, then McMahon's going to get a little time. McMahon. Very successful so far, percentage-wise, but not health-wise. He has a bad back and a bad finger. It's Peyton on first down. Peyton bopped by Anthony Dickerson after a couple of yards. Line of scrimmage is just outside the Bear 30. The Cowboy defense, the front four, has been playing extremely well. Jones, Dutton, White, and Jeffco. Game of three. Second and seven at third and one. quickly to Bears. McMahon has Peyton behind him. It's only Peyton. Peyton fakes. He carries that ball loosely, but he doesn't fumble. He has such huge hands. The linebackers for Dallas, Hegman, Brunig, and Anthony Dickerson. Secondary, Walls, Fellows, and Dexter Klinkscale, who Tom Landry said to us last night is the most improved player on the team, and Michael Downs, who had a spectacular week last week against the Packers. Third down. And four. Great Walter Payton. 87 rushes this year, averaging 5.4 yards of carry. He's the lone setback. That's McKinnon in motion. Out of sync. A lot of pointing down there. You see that Bortz is pointing at White that he moved first. White is pointing at Bortz. And the officials are going to say, yeah. Was board. False start, number 74, third down. White can move. Yep, but it was the guy next to him. It's a left tackle, Jim Covert. Watch 74. See, now once they're set, once they get that hand down, they can't pick it up. You see what Covert did? He right. picked up that down hand. Now, the ends can do that. The backs can do it. But the lineman, once that hand is down, they can't pick it up until the ball is snapped. And that'll make it third and nine. A dangerous situation lately against Dallas. They have that 4-0 defense in there now. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And the Bears are forced to take a timeout. McMahon not quite sure of what he wanted to do. And so in the first quarter, with 10.47 left to play, it's Dallas 3, Chicago nothing. Well, John Madden, we're at Soldier Field in Chicago. Dallas 3. The Bears nothing. 10.47 left to play first quarter. Randy White had a, just an outstanding afternoon against the Packers last week. Made 10 solo tackles. Three wide receivers. McKinnon goes one direction, comes back the other. Out of the shotgun is McMahon. No blitz. Caught by McKinnon. Lost the ball. Bears got it back. Kennan shaken up just a little bit. 24 yard like pickup. He's got something in his eye on that play. Like he got a finger in the eye or something. He's coming off the field after the play. Let's see if we can see it here. Again, McMahon stands in there. Pretty good pass protection. You see that ball how it kind of floats a little? Now watch McKinnon there and see if he does get a hand or a finger in the eye. No, it doesn't look like it. He just fumbled that ball. Good hustle by Brian Bashnagel. Watching that good pass protection you were talking about, the Bears had three blockers on Randy White. One way to get him. By in a scrimmage, the Dallas 47. Bashnagel was in motion. This is Suey, the ball carrier. Maybe a half yard. Stopped by Randy White. Did you see that? But before the play, Suey walked up to McMahon and asked him something. Then he went back and lined up in his position. You know, sometimes they call the play in the huddle, then they give the snap count. Now, you have to know the snap count, but sometimes they'll forget it when they get up there. And I'll bet you Suey forgot the snap count. He knew he was carrying it, though. 
And if you're going to carry it, then you better know when it's going to be snapped so you can get started. It's hard on the quarterback if you don't. Second and nine. McMahon to Peyton. Peyton with some room. Peyton struggling. Boy, is he strong. Too tall Jones finally gets him to the ground. And Peyton wants to get up. I'm sure the Cowboys caught that. That's what Too Tall said. That's what my coach said to do. Tom Landry is saying, you know, one thing about Walter Payton is he has never finished until the whistle blows. He said a lot of backs, once you get them, they just kind of give up a little. He said, not this guy. He said he hits and those feet are going and he'll drive, he'll take on anyone. And I'm sure he told his defense, look, you got to take that guy and you have to finish him off. So it'll be third and three at the Dallas 40. Cowboys leading 3-0. Peyton again. Just bangs his body straight ahead and comes very close to a first down as Too Tall Jones and John Dutton made the stop. Tell you, that Walter Payton is an amazing guy. I mean, he just takes that. That was just a dive play, straight ahead dive. When he runs inside, he runs like a fullback. When he runs outside, he runs like a halfback. And when he goes out for a pass, he runs like a wide receiver, and when he blocks, he blocks like a guard. That's a pretty good combination. They measure. He has it. That's just because of his drive. I mean, he just took that thing, boom, he pounded it right in there. Just that leg strength and strength, massive strength he possesses. It really isn't that big. But he plays big. I'll tell you, he does. I mean, I mean, he really has a body on him. We saw him yesterday. I mean, he is so big and compact and and strong. Uh, amazing guy. They made a pretty good deal there, and they made him. He is the lone setback. He being Walter Payton. McKinnon comes in motion. They get to Payton to the other side. He jumps. Hit by Dexter Clinkscale and somebody else underneath the pile. Randy White. You know, the last time the Cowboys played the Packers, Walter Payton gained 179 yards against them. The Cowboys beat him 10 to 9. But Tom Landry says, what we have to do is, he said, we have to control Walter Payton. He said, you don't stop him. He said, you just control him. I said, well, what's that mean? And he said, keep him under 100 yards. So I would imagine that's one of those goals that they put on the blackboard this week. Yeah, things we have to do. You know, like a shop, right. things to do today. Pick up cleaning through that through Peyton under 100. Second and nine, the Bears go with two tight ends. This is Moorhead in motion. McMahon to Suey. Suey got some room, and he gets down inside the Dallas 30. It looks like another Bear first down. Bob Brunig, there was some question about whether he'd play or not, made the tackle. You know, that Suey there, he'll finish a runoff, too. This is what... We used to always try and teach our backs, you know, that a lot of backs can get to the hole, get through the hole. Look, he follows that big line around here. Now watch him here. He makes that first here, but watch him finish off the run. Put the head down, boom, boom, boom. He'll get a couple more steps and about three more yards. Finish off the run. Third and about a foot. Seven minutes left to play in the first quarter with Dallas leading 3 nothing, but the Bears on the move. This is the kind of game they want to play. Ball control. Peyton was the man in motion. McMahon goes on the quarterback sneak. Behind his offensive center, Hilgenberg, and makes the first down. I remember talking to Mike Ditka yesterday, and he was talking about it. He volunteered the information. He said, if I had to pick the most valuable player in practice this past week, I'd pick my offensive center, Jay Hilgenberg. I don't think I've ever heard that said before. I don't think so either. It's usually a wide receiver, a running back, or some defensive player, but he chose the center. And maybe it's a job he has to do. He's going to have to He's going to have to help on Randy White today. He's going to have to help in picking up those blitzes, and maybe that's why he's so fired up. Randy White's darn near right on his head this time. Clink scale, but a good gain. Gain of about six. They did a job up the middle. Watch him here. Now, what happens? Now, watch Randy White there. He starts going to his right. Hildenberg, the center, just takes him that way. The guard folds around, and Peyton hits that thing right in behind him. 
center blocks one way guard folds around watch it here watch the center the center block to the left the guard fold around watch it come right up here on 53 Brunig and then Peyton goes right off the center here's Peyton again this time smothered by Ed Jones one of the things that people believe you have to do against this flex defense of Dallas is be able to run straight at him. I think that's the thing. You know, we talked about Mike Ditka and having been there with the Cowboys, and he says he knows that defense, and that's what he would say. You have to run at it because they're all set up for pursuit. They have the flex of guys up and back and so on, and if you sweep and pull guards, they'll get in there behind you. But if you just run right at them, and that defense have to, has to sit there and take it on. Third and one from the Dallas 17. Moorhead was in motion. This is Suey this time. Close to a first down, Eugene Lockhart, who has replaced Brunig at middle linebacker, made the hit that brought him down. He's close to a first down. Seattle leading Minnesota 7-3 in the first quarter. It is a bare first down here. Miami 3, St. Louis nothing in the first quarter. Soldier Field sold out. The Bears 3-1. and one. Wow. Sure is a great day. Boy, you couldn't ask for a better day. Soldier Field has been renovated, and it's now a very, very handsome stadium. Cowboys no first downs. Bears 4. McMahon back to throw. A lot of time. McMahon can go, and he does go. End zone, McMahon. yard touchdown run Bob Thomas for the extra point and it's good Bashnagel holding it's the Bears seven the Cowboys three they went 72 yards in 13 play and more importantly they kept the ball eight minutes 14 seconds you know McMahon has a broken hand and he has a bad back but he'll still run when he sees an opening here too tall Jones the left end got caught to the inside see him there and he went he saw that opening and he not only saw an opening on the line, but he saw the opening all the way to the end zone. So 357 left to play in the first quarter at Soldier Field, and the Bears lead the Cowboys 7-3. Pat Summerall and John Madden at Soldier Field in Chicago on the shores of Lake Michigan. The Bears with a very impressive drive. Bob Thomas to kick off. Gary Allen at the three. Allen breaks one tackle, gets back to the 20. Let's watch that touchdown again. Now, when you have a quarterback like McMahon that runs, then the ends, here's Too Tall Jones, he's an end. You have to stay outside. You can't take the inside. He starts here, then he goes inside. McMahon drops back, sees Jones caught inside. He comes out here and runs straight up in this hole. Now watch, now watch Jones. See, he's outside. He goes on Keith Van Horn. See, now, see the inside move there? Now McMahon sees it, see? Now he comes out, clear field, all the way to the end zone. Look out. Now we're back with a Dallas first down and hold of the back to Donnelly. Leslie Frazier was the defender. Dallas first, first down. Look at that scoring drive. That was the thing, you know, that, that maybe Jim McMahon, you know, he has that broken hand, and he really has trouble passing. We were watching him in a pregame warm-up. The balls were kind of fluttering on him. But maybe just his leadership, his presence out there, you know, does something for this Bear offense. Surely it looks like it. Here's Hogaboom going to throw again. Blitz coming. They had a screen call. They got the right play. This is Dorsett still on his feet. He might be gone. Dorsett, good night.
right play in that situation? That was the right play. As you said, they had to blitz on, and then the line was all able to get out in front of Dorsett. There was only like two bare defenders out there. You give him that kind of room, and you could be lining up for the extra point very quickly. Cowboys look a little fired up today, don't they? Yeah, they do. And you can bet Mike Ditka. He is always fired up. Raphael Septien with Holger Boom holding. We'll try for the extra point. Low snap. Holger Boom got it. Septien hits it. It is Dallas 10. The Bears 7. Let's watch that play again. Now, the Bears all get caught inside. Now, watch Dorsett. He fakes a block, has his lineman out here in front. Hulkaboom loops it up over Hampton, and then here comes Dorsett. Block, block, block. He just ran right through about four of those Bear defenders, and then he outruns the last one, Mike Richardson. 10-7. Cowboys lead with three minutes left to play in the first quarter. Chicago 7. Bears kept it eight minutes and 14 seconds to get their touchdown. Dallas did it in two plays and much more quickly. Here is Septian kicking off in the direction of Jack Cameron, who will take it at the three. He can make some things happen. Hit by Septian, slowed him down enough for Bates to make the stop. Victor Scott was over to help out, but a good, good return. Let's watch the touchdown again and see what a screen pass is. Dorsett is here. He's going to fake here and then come back out. His lineman, we see Herb Scott, he gets out after they let him go by. And then Rafferty, the center, gets out. And then Kirk Peterson gets out. And they form a line right down the field. Now watch what a screen pass is. But here's Dorsett. He fakes to the right, comes out here. Now watch. Here's Herb Scott, 68. He's the first guy right there. He gets that block. In the meantime, the Bears are out quickly and ready to go with Matsui, the ball carrier, and Randy White out to make the stop after a gain of a couple. Anyway, on that touchdown play, Scott got the first block, and then Tom Rafferty and Kurt Peterson got the second blocks that sprung. Good play. Not a bad return either on that kickoff. Good one. The Jets leading New England 7-0 first quarter. The Jets seem to have put together the missing pieces. Indianapolis 7, Buffalo nothing. Second and 10, they say no game. Maybe about a foot. McMahon sends McKinnon in motion. He has Peyton alone set back behind him. Draw play Peyton. Peyton into the Dallas secondary. Peyton into Dallas territory. Everson Walls finally brings him down. A bare first down at the Dallas 38-yard line. When you see those feet on Peyton, you know, they always talk about great backs have great feet. And I think on that play, we'll see Peyton's feet. Watch the draw plays. The only back in the backfield. A little delay. Takes the draw. Now watch those feet go. Boom, boom, boom. Cut out there to the right. Look at that cut right there. He planted that left foot. Wet, wet. Then right at the end, put both hands over the ball to protect it. Look at those feet go and those eyes, the vision, that cut. And now put both hands over it and finish it off. Boom! 45 yards for Peyton. More than that now as he barrels for about nine more. You see something. 54 yards now for Peyton. If he keeps going at this, it's still the first quarter. He has over 50 yards. They aren't going to keep him under 100 yards today. That's one goal that uh, they better cross They're going to have to have a committee meeting. I'm saying, man, I know you can't stop him, but doggone, control him. Well, they're doing what they said they had to do, and that is go right at that flex defense. Go straight at it. 48 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Line of scrimmage to Dallas. 28. Peyton again. Enough for the first down. Randy White will be on the bottom of that pile, number 54. Look at that. Mark Forbes is doing a pretty good job of blocking Randy White. Uh, last week, you know, we saw that that didn't get done, but here, watch him. Forbes is number 62. Right to the left of the center. Now watch him. See, he fires in, stands him up, and here comes Peyton right in behind. Only made a couple yards, but it was a first down. But I'll tell you, he is controlling Randy White so far. First 
and 10 for the Bears from the Dallas 25. Now, Lord, here's Peyton again, bouncing off people. Dutton and Jones make the stop. Peyton got a couple. That's the end of the first quarter now. The Bears on the move again, led by number 34. The Cowboys lead 10-7. They'll change in. Michigan. A lot of people taking advantage of this great day. The Honey Bears, the pair of cheerleaders, have something to cheer about right now. Second and eight from the Dallas 23. Peyton. Down to about the 20, a pickup of three. Anthony Dickerson stopped him. Let's look at the first quarter stats. Well, it's an interesting thing. The Bears have only thrown one pass. 17 runs. Of course, most of those runs being Walter Payton. This is more like Walter Payton and the offensive line against the Cowboy defense. One pass. Of course, that was a complete one. And that was a big one. That got their touchdown drive started. McMahon to Dennis McKinnon. Soldier Field. Suey moves over to the right a little bit. Third down. And five. McMahon to Payton. He'll have more than five. point with back to Nagel holding. Bears back in the lead. Now it's 14 to 10. 57 yards, seven plays. Peyton has now picked up 82 yards and 13 carries. And closing in on Jim Brown as the all-time leading rusher. Field Chicago, Pat Summerall, John Madden. Bears have just recaptured the lead on Walter Peyton's 80th touchdown of his career. 14-10 the score with 14-09 left to play in the first half. Moving up with the all-time lead. Thomas will kick off Gary Allen and Chuck McSwain. That deep knuckleball kick. Allen fields up about the three. Got one good block. Got one great block. Bill Bates. Boy, did he level somebody. <laughs> Talk about a block. Watch this one. Watch Matt Suey here. You know, backs have to block for each other. Suey comes in and kicks out the linebacker here. Kurt Becker, the guard, gets another good block. But watch a block right here by Suey that springs Peyton on that touchdown. Watch him. He comes in the linebacker right there. See it? And then Peyton can come and run right off that block. Makes a nice move right at the end on Everson Wall. And so Dallas takes over. Inside their own 20. Ogaboom gets it out to Cosby, and Cosby heads up field. Knocked out of bounds by Al Harris. Cosby not enough for a first down, a plus seven, a gain of seven. The number one and two defenses in the NFL are being hammered a bit right now. I think maybe Mike Ditka does know a little about this Dallas defense and the way to go after it. The way he's doing it, as we said, is just running right straight at it with power football. Of course, it helps when you have Walter Payton. That's 90% of it. Second and three as Dorsett moves back deep, almost out of the picture. Here's Dorsett. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but certainly nothing more than that. Dan Hampton. Some question about whether number 99 Hampton would play. He hurt his left knee last week against Seattle, and he's limping a little bit right now. That was the thing that Tom Landry was saying. He says, we have to control Dan Hampton. Usually, he alternates. The Cowboys do Herb Scott and Glenn Cummings are at left guard. Today, he said he's going to play the one that blocks Hampton the best. Right now, it's Herbert Scott. 
Ogaboom has Newsom in the backfield. That's Renfro in motion. There's a penalty marker down. Renfro will have plenty enough for a Dallas first down, but I think he was in motion. Gary Fensick made the stop. 29-yard pickup. It's against the Bears. The play will stand as is. Renfro wide open. He was, you know, he started in motion and then he came back underneath the defense. We always talk about underneath. That means behind the defensive line and in front of the linebacker. Watch him. He comes in motion across there. Now he's going to come back in here. Now across. You see him in front of the secondary there. And just he just outruns Gary Fensick. Fensick eventually will catch up with him. The Cowboys move into bear territory. Renfro, of course, obtained in the offseason in the trade for Butch Johnson. Overboom toward Cosby again. Cosby inside the Bear 30. Tripped up by Fencing. Another Dallas first down. I think Tom Landry and the Cowboys said, to heck with that running. We're only averaging 3.5 this season. Let's start throwing the ball. See if we can find Doug Cosby in there. Hit him on and out. Hit Renfro. And then comes back and finds a big tight end right down the middle after a play fake. Cosby does a good job of finding a hole in the defense. The quarterback does a good job of finding him because he's six foot six. Pitches back to Dorsett. Struggles to stay on his feet. Mike Hartenstein takes him down. Dorsett carried five times now, I think, and is still not gained a yard. You know, and I think that proves that this Bear defense, you know, it's number one against the rush and the pass. But I think if the Cowboys are going to beat them today, they have to do it one with turnovers or two with the passing game. Second and ten. 11.55 left to play. Bears leading the Cowboys 14-10. Ogaboom fakes to Dorsett. Ogaboom to Dorsett, who comes up with it. Beg your pardon, it's Newsom. Timmy Newsom comes down with the ball. Big Timmy is turning into some receiver. So it seems like more and more as we watch these Cowboys play, we're seeing them use Timmy Newsom more. That time he just went straight up the field. A lot like a lot like Cosby did on the play before that. See now watch Hogaboom. He can see him. He finds him. Boom. He hits him right there. Look at those shots that court, those quarterbacks take after they throw the ball. Looking, where'd that guy come from? Oh, it's complete. Well, it's worth it. I'll do a backward somersault. He's an athlete. That was McMichael. Steve McMichael had hit him. It's all First. those delivery sacks after they throw the ball. First and goal from the two. It's Newsom. And Newsom barrels into the end zone. Dallas recaptures the lead. Newsom got a pretty good block from Springs. Springs was a wingback. He came in motion and he did a trap thing there in the middle. Came from the outside from left to right. They got the hole. It'll be Raphael Septien with Hogaboom holding. Newsom with the catch set it up. And Newsom with the run scored it. The Cowboys have recaptured the lead from the Bears. And we have 10.55 left to play in the first half. 17-14 the score. We may have a change when the NFL statistics come out next week in the numbers one and two defensive teams. You know, it always happens that way, though. You know, you have the number one and two defensive teams. You think it'll be a real defensive battle and it's offense. But then you get the reverse of that and you get a 10-9 game. Right. Septian's kickoff is short and high, and it's Dennis Gentry who can't find a handle for a minute and now surrounded by Cowboys. Carl Howard almost took his head with him. But you Bill Bates is down there somewhere, somewhere. too, isn't he? <laughs> We're there wherever there's a collision, you can bet he's close by. 17-14, Dallas over Chicago, first half. Do you have any idea how much longer time Landry's going to coach? I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if this were his last year. Especially if they have a good year. Jim McMahon.
man on first and 10 from the bare 17. Now McKinnon in motion. This is Peyton again. And again, he gets good yardage. Hit Michael Downs and just knocked him backwards. Outside the 20, about the 22. Matt Suey, a good block again. You know, an interesting thing about Peyton, he'll carry that ball out. You know, and all coaches say, don't carry it out. You can carry it out. It's okay to carry it outside. But right at the end, put it away. You see how he does at the end there? He puts both hands on it. When he's running, I think for speed and balance, I think you have to keep the ball out. And then you just put it away when you're going to get hit. He got six yards. He now has 88. It's second down and four. Eight in motion. Sui, the ball carrier. Sui. Up quickly is Michael Downs. And maybe he got to the line of scrimmage. We'll check our scoreboard now and see what's happening around the rest of the NFL. New England and the Jets tied at seven, second quarter. Indianapolis Colts seven, Buffalo nothing. That's in the second quarter. Kansas City and Cleveland nothing nothing second quarter Miami two field goals by Von Schoeman. they lead St. Louis six nothing Seattle over Minnesota seven to three in the second quarter here it's third and four and the Cowboys lead the Bears 17 14 it's also the highest scoring game so far we got some action here Boom. third down and four Suri he won't get it yes he does get it Cowboys had him hemmed up and surrounded, and he cut back between two tackles. Michael Downs. I think the Cowboys thought the same thing you did. We got him, we got him, he got him, let him go, and then he just kept running and went right through him. First down, 10 yards to go. You never think. Think you got him. You got him, got him. Watch him here. I think that happened. What now? It's just a pitch out there. They read it. The Cowboys are all running down the line. We got him. Look, we got him. Keep him inside out, inside out. I got him. Oh, no, I don't have it down there. Oh, I got him. Finally, we get him. Made a good move on Bob Brunick. Good dead. Here's McMahon to throw his second pass of the day, and he has Emory Moorhead across midfield into Dallas territory. Bob Brunick and Everson Walls got him to the turf, the artificial turf. You know, what impresses me about this so far is that both teams really know each other. You see, Moorhead, he's the inside guy there. He was coming right down, right down the seam. Pretty good pass protection on that play. You know, the Bears are really doing a good job. You see that elbow that Randy White gave Bortz? Hit him right in the face. Bortz just stayed right there, just like a line, just square. First down, Bears, the Dallas 48. Suey again behind Peyton's block. Suey chased out of bounds finally by Anthony Dickerson. Jim Jeffcoat over to help out. Giving Peyton a little bit of a rest. Well, not much of a rest because he has to block on the play when Suey runs. That's one thing about this bare offense. If you run the ball, you have to work. And if you don't run it, then you have to block for the other guy who does. In either case, you're working. There's no misdirection. Yards rushing, Dallas two. Yards passing, 158. The Bears controlling the clock and controlling the ball on the ground, but not leading on the score. I can't Suey. Got him to block. Suey gets another Bear first down. Ron Fellows made the stop, but they are rambling. Nine yards for Suey. He's carried eight times, picked up 30 yards. That wasn't a bad play. They put Peyton in motion to the other side and brought Matt Suey back to the left side behind a block by Keith Van Horn, the right tackle. Let's see if we can see it. Now watch the right tackle. See, there goes Peyton. Now watch the right tackle, Van Horn, pull. Suey gets right in behind Van Horn, 78. He makes a block there. Suey runs right off it. First down, Bears, the Dallas 36. McKinnon started in motion. This is Peyton on first down. Peyton's over 100 yards, and he's got another Bear first down. Ron Fellows had to make the tackle. So much for controlling Walter Peyton and keeping him under 100. Just said the first half. Watch those moves that he makes. Plants that right foot, takes that little jump. Then he knows which way that end zone is. Square those shoulders. Right up the field. 
Cowboys are saying, what do we have to do to stop this guy? Well, there's not much you can do. Nobody else, nobody's ever stopped him. 15 carries, 102 yards. And it's not even halftime yet. That 100 yards ties Jim, Brown, Jim Brown's record for the most times over 100. This time the Cowboys hit him at the line of scrimmage. It's Randy White. And Bob Brunick. You know, Walter Payton was saying the other day that this is his 10th year in the NFL, and he said the hardest that he's ever been hit has been by Randy White. The way he's shaking his head there, that may be the second hardest he's ever been hit. In case you're wondering who had the best day ever against the Dallas defense, it was Jim Brown, who picked up 232 yards back in 1963 against Dallas. Earl Campbell got 195. Wilbert Montgomery got 194 in a playoff game. This is Sewick, draw play. Scrambling for some yards, gets down to about the 17. Heckman and Brunig. It'll be, bring up a third down. Well, we had a little fighting going on down there. That was Mark Borks. You know, Mark Borks is his first year starting as a left guard or a guard for the Bears. He was a defensive player originally, couldn't make it, so they moved him to offense. Now he's starting. Mike Ditka said yesterday, the good thing about Bortz having to block Randy White is he's naive. He said he doesn't know him. He's never heard of him. He, don't know, he doesn't know what he's in for. Third down and five. There's six for six on their third down conversion. McKinnon goes in motion. McMahon out of one grasp. Down in the second one, the first sack. McMahon couldn't find anybody, and the Cowboys taken down. John Dutton, I think, was the first man to get the hand on him. And then arrived Jeff Coke, and then Anthony Dickerson. Now, this is good coverage by the Cowboys secondary because we'll see McMahon starts out. He has some time, but he can't find anyone open, and Dutton was the first guy there. When you get a guy like John Dutton, you know, six foot six coming straight at you up the middle, he blurs the field on you. Bob Thomas will try to tie the score. He is seven out of nine. This one is from 41 yards out. Bashnagel is holding. Thomas gets it high. But it's wide right. So Dallas hangs on to that lead. 17-14 with 4-11 left to play in the first half. It's been some first half. Tom Landry and Jim Schopner over on the sideline. See what happened to Bob Thomas. You gotta follow through, that's what happened. That's what it looked like. It looked like he just punched at it, but he didn't follow through, watch a boom, and he just stopped there, didn't he? he brought yeah. that right foot right back down. Looks like he was trying to go to right field, and he did. Hogaboom has the handoff to Timmy Newsom. Newsom by Mike Singletary. Dallas has had the ball seven minutes, one second. The Bears, 18-48. But the Cowboys lead 17-14. And we have just under four minutes left to play in the first half. It'll be second and eight. Come on, D, let's go. Come on, come on, man. Beautiful day on the shores of Lake Michigan. Danny White. Starter for four years, now the punter and the backup. They need eight for a first down. They're at their own 26. Ogaboom, back to throw, chased by Hartenstein. Gets it outside to Newsom. That's that old misdirection play, that bootleg where they put the linemen going one way and then they come the other way in a bootleg. Uh, now watch him here. He's going to end up coming to this side. You see the lineman pull it the other way? Hold those linebackers, and he comes out here, and he finds the back out there, Timmy Newton. That really does hold those linebackers when you get those linemen pulling the opposite way that the quarterback goes. Ogaboom is 7 out of 10, has hit 7 in a row, third and a yard. Gets out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Mike Richardson took him out of bounds. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. 
any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. First and 10, Dallas, their own 36. Dorsett, six carries, three yards. Not a very good start. Tough Bear defense against the rush. Bogaboom, though, has found some holes in the secondary. Here comes Dorsett. To about the 42. Gary Fensick, the safety man, came up to make the stop. See what they've done on first down so far. Well, you know, one thing uh, we said last last week, the Cowboys, 25 times they ran on first down. It looked like they looked at that, and now they've run five plays, and they passed three plays. The Bears are just making a run scrimmage out of this thing. Right. Second down and four. Look down a six, but yeah, there's the flag. Knew it had to be. Yeah, it looked like it was on Cooper there, the right tackle Ball of the Cowboys. Start, right side, offensive line. Ball start right side, and that's where Cooper is. Let's check out the scores again and see what's happening elsewhere. 7-3, the Colts over the Bills now, second quarter. Miami is 12-0 over St. Louis. Dan Marino has hit another touchdown pass. This one to Joe Rose. He has turned into quite a, quite a quarterback. There's the situation here at Soldier Field, Chicago. 2.44 left to play first half. Cowboys 17, Bears 14. It'll be second and nine. Hogaboom fakes. Has time. Throws to Newsom. Newsom gallops for the first down. Out of bounds. Stops the clock. 11-yard gain. That was tough coverage here. Where the, that was Mike Singletary there. And where the middle linebacker has to get to the outside, that's really some coverage. Tell you what, there's a good example of the strength of the arm of Gary Hogaboom. He had to really zip that one, and he did. He can hum it. First down, Dallas, and Hogaboom gives this time to Dorsett. Again, they contain him. A loss, perhaps, of a yard. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. Walter Payton in the headband watching his adversary, although he and Dorsett are reasonably close friends. He's really had some first hand. And you see who he sits right next to? His blocker, Matt Suey. You always stay around those blockers. You'll see a running back. You'll always keep pretty close contact with those guys and his offensive line. You buy him dinner and do all those things. Oh, yeah. A lot of hang out with those guys. A lot of hang time with those guys. Second down, 11. Ogaboom has been able to move it through the air. That'll be the two-minute warning. And notified will be Landry and Ditka. Both teams, although the Dallas Cowboys have three timeouts left, the Bears only have two. 17-14 score. 17, Chicago 14. Second quarter, the timeout situation. Dallas three, the Bears two. Second and 11. Cowboys their own 47-yard line. Hogaboom back to throw. The first sack by the Bear. Steve McMichael. That was a line stun on that. See if we can see it here. Steve McMichael's crossed on that play. Okay, now just watch it here. We'll get a cross. Let's see if we can get this type of thing. Here's McMichael. He's going to cross and come right up the middle. Now watch that. That's what they call a twin stunt. You see Hampton go outside. Here comes McMichael's on the cross right up the middle. Hampton occupied three blockers. That's part of the reason. He's from Arkansas. McMichael's from Texas. They play side by side. It's that sack again. And we'll see Dan Hampton does take three blockers. Watch, here's Hampton. He comes this way. He takes all three of these blockers, and McMichaels comes in the cross. Now watch 99, Hampton come to his left. One, the center, the guard, the tackle, and look what happens. It frees McMichael straight up the middle. That's a defensive Third. play. Defense has plays, too. That makes a situation where the Cowboys need 22 yards for a first down. Score is 17-14, Dallas. A minute 50 seconds left to play in the first half as Hogaboom will operate out of the shotgun. 
Bears not showing blitz yet. And they don't. Flag is down on the far side of the field. The pass is incomplete intended for Renfro. Let's see who the penalties against. Cowboys punting unit has already come on the field. I'll tell you, did Hampton hit Hogaboom on that play just as he threw the ball? Illegal motion. Declined. Fourth down. Their defense does its job. That's what they have to do, but watch the end of the play, and you can see why it's an incomplete pass. Watch here. He goes up the throw, and there's Hampton right on him. Ooh. You can't see guys when you got guys that big with those arms. Look at those arms and stuff on him, hanging on. You can't throw the ball like that. Danny White into punt, only the second punt of the game. Bears have not had to punt yet. Jeff Fisher goes back deep for the Bears. Remember what happened the first time they tried to handle it. Cowboys recovered the fumble and got a field goal by Septien. And that's the difference. White. Not much of a kick. The Bears will take over. 25-yard punt, no return. The Bears will start from their own 38-yard line. Baffgill, Septien. Whose 44 yard field goal is the margin so far as Dallas is up by three. Mosley connects on 20 of 21 field goal attempts to set an NFL record for accuracy. Mosley also hits a record 23 consecutive kicks, which includes three from the previous season, as he becomes the first kicker in league history to be named the most valuable player. Just announcing to the crowd what we told you a minute ago that with Walter Payton's gaining of over 100 yards already in the first half, he has tied the all time record for 100 yard gains. Games 58. He's tied Jim Brown in that category. And now he's chasing him for the rushing lead. That man out of the shotgun gives to Payton. Peyton gets around the corner, stiff arms one man, gets a bear first down. Victor Scott got him out of bounds, 11 yards for Peyton. Thank you, Harry. What the Bears were trying to do is get in a shotgun, make the Cowboys think past, then they hit that quick draw in there. Another block there by Suey. Watch that boom. I mean, that's cutting. He planted that right foot, and boom, his next step, that left foot was parallel. Ooh. You know, it'd be fun just to dream dreams like this, that you could do this. Run straight like this. Now, watch this. Look at that next step crossing over there. Put that ball out. Put it away to the sideline. Little stiff arm on wall. Another stiff arm. Oof. And they go out the shotgun again. And it's Peyton again. And Peyton streaks into Cowboy territory. To the 35 before Michael Downs knocks him down. A 16-yard pickup by Walter Peyton. Bears out of the huddle quickly. They only have one timeout remaining. McMahon. Might as well try it again. This time he's going to throw. McMahon throws up the middle. Has Suey. Suey to the Dallas 13-14. Victor Scott finally got him down. The Bears on the move. McMahon takes the last timeout. 21-yard game. Field is erupting with the fan enthusiasm for the Bears. Coming up at the half, scores and highlights with Brent, Irv, and the Greek. Now look at Gadget play. Well, Brent and Irv are bringing the scores and highlights, and the Greek is bringing the Gadget play. He has them in his pocket. sleeve of Jim McMahon. There are the initials GSH. And that is in tribute to the late owner of the Chicago Bears and one of the founders 
of professional football, George Stanley Pallas. A great man. Hey, we all owe a lot to George Pallas. He was one of the guys that got this started for all of us. Peyton asking uh, this most enthusiastic crowd to be a little bit a little bit less vocal so they can hear what they're trying to do. This drive has been only three plays. Peyton for 11, Peyton for 15, and the pass to Suey for 22. And there is the Dallas 14. McMahon asking for quiet. He starts McKinnon in motion. the stop that Peyton got a couple and now they got to hurry they don't have another timeout they're at the 11 Peyton chased and this time they control it that's the way you have to do it you got to get everybody chasing clock still goes no timeouts left for the Bears they got to hurry. They ought to throw one and get well. Of course, it's third down. If you throw it, you have to try and complete it. Big man has it complete to Willie Ball inside the nine, but inbound. But inbound, and it didn't make the first down. They have to try and get in. They're not going to make it. Not going to make it. They let the time run out. They can't do it. Flag is up. Thomas is good, but the time expired was not very smart. Oh, well, they didn't. I think they had one extra run in there, but they should have done that. Second down should have been a passing play to stop the clock, either thrown it to the sideline or in the end zone. When they ran two, then that third play still could have been out of bounds, but they didn't. So they really had two bad play selections in a row. So Tom Landry's team heads for the locker room, being battered and bruised, but still leading 17-14. Thomas is arguing about whether that field goal was good or not. It was good, but the time had run out. So the halftime comes, and Dallas leads by three, 17-14. Great first half. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger along with Irv Cross. And Irv, we have the gentleman, our friend the Greek, who assured us this was going to be one of the lowest scoring games of the year. <laughs> You're not kidding. Did you notice what McMahon tried to do at the half? He's trying to uphold me. Yeah, wasn't that <laughs> terrible, though, that they couldn't get the ball out of bounds and kick the field goal like John that pointed was out? Terrible. Irv and Jimmy, let's get everybody up to date with the scores and some of the highlights. If you've joined us late, we'll show you exactly what went on in Soldier Field. Here's an interesting game. The Jets leading 14-7 right now. Eason has a touchdown pass for the Patriots in that game. Ryan has one to his friend Wesley Walker. That was 12 yards out. Tony Franklin has missed two field goals in that contest for the Patriots. And Buffalo and Indianapolis. Buffalo has just gone ahead 10-7. Good story here. Joe Dufek, the former Yale quarterback, has stepped in to quarterback the Bills for the first time. Joe Ferguson is forced out. That stops his streak right now at 107 starts with that team. And Dufek, in his first appearance, he threw the touchdown pass, and he has them ahead right now, 10 to 7. Cleveland and Kansas City, tough defensive game. The Browns leading it by a field goal over the Chiefs. And Jimmy said that Miami right now has to be rated as the top team, even better than the Raiders. It's 19-7. They look excellent again. However, there is one note that is really going to affect the Dolphins. Kim Bocamper suffered a broken left ankle at warm-ups prior to the start of this game. And he, of course, is the heart of that defensive front for Don Shula, and they are going to miss him tremendously. Again, it is 19-7. Now, Jan Stenerud has just booted his second field goal in this game, and that cuts Seattle's lead to 7-6, to six, and Craig hit Largent with a touchdown pass. That covered 20 yards in that game. And, of course, a terribly entertaining one you're watching unfold in Soldier Field right now. The difference, Rafael Septian kicking that field goal that had the Cowboys ahead, and here's what happened after this. Jim McMahon will drop back and roll to the right, and John Madden diagrammed how Too Tall Jones crashed in. That left this alley open, and McMahon McMahon got into the end zone, 16 yards, and it was 7-3. Now watch Gary Hogaboom in this next sequence. He'll fake a handoff. They'll go outside on the screen to Dorsett. 
And Tony may have the quickest start of any back in the NFL. Once you give him daylight, he can accelerate. 68 yards for the touchdown. Cowboys regained the lead. Now it was 10-7, and Mike Ditka very unhappy with his defense at that point. But McMahon came right back, and what an afternoon Walter Payton is having. He carried 20 times for 130 yards, and now he is just 92 yards short of the great Jim Brown. Jimmy, you cannot say too much about one Walter Payton. He's the greatest runner. He's not a halfback. I mean, not a, just a runner. He's a halfback because he can pass, he can run, he can block. He does everything, and he's a super young man besides. Would you like to wager a guess as to what is going to happen in the second half, or are you decide? It's, very, it's going to be very close in a very low-scoring game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Herb, this has been kind of a wild year for running backs in general. Well, a lot of fun plays. But, you know, the hot dog artists in the NFL have been told they can't dance on the field this year. So instead... Some players are marching to a different drummer and coming up with razzle-dazzle plays that keep things moving at a ragtime beat. And it's a fake! The fake is in vogue throughout the NFL this year. The Rams didn't get a kick out of Bengal punter Pat McAnally. Instead, he passed for a long game. And the Lions dusted off an old favorite, the Fleet Flicker, and caught Minnesota's defense off guard last week. But the real trick is when to resort to these gimmick plays. I think you got to see a spot to want to use those. You've got to also uh, think that it would work for some reason. And then you got to find a place in the game where it fits in. So it is not just something you go out and say, hey, here's a gadget play, let's run it. You just try to keep your teams off balance. And uh, you put in a trick play here once in a while. But uh, that does add a little bit of extra excitement into a ball game. Sometimes the trick play artists outsmart themselves instead of their opponents. This giant reverse may have seemed like a good idea at the time, but the result was a Redskin touchdown. And you can be sure that Lion coach Monty Clark didn't enjoy looking at the reruns of this botched up effort. Both plays are great as long as they work. And you give them a lot of praise. If they don't work, then you're, you're asking them what in the world are you trying to do there. But when they do work, you find new stars at odd positions. Here's Viking quarterback Tommy Kramer receiving a big pass. And forget about that white Hogaboom rivalry in Dallas. The passing star of this Cowboy touchdown was receiver Mike Renfro connecting to Doug Donnelly. I thought that brought helium and it just wouldn't come down, wouldn't come down. And uh, it doesn't matter how it comes there, though, I guess. I don't think the... Uh... Danny or uh, Hoagie are worried about my talents, but uh, Steve Pelour, our third-string quarterback, might have a little problem. He, uh, he might move to, be move to 14 this week. <laughs> well, I tell you, there are four gadget plays running around the league this afternoon, and they all failed miserably. If they don't go well, of course, they backfire on you. Brent, Tony Eason's having a big day. Absolutely. He says, Irv, if all of those halfbacks are going to throw the ball, I'm going to run it a little bit. And he has just dashed into the end zone from five yards out now. The extra point is good. Patriots and the Jets are tied at 14. Of course, Easton is out of Illinois, and yesterday we saw another good Illini quarterback, Jack Trudeau, and his coach, Mike White. And White believes that Trudeau someday will also be a star in the National Football League. And we'll continue here with the NFL Today on CBS after these messages. The National Football League lost an old and dear friend this week when John Facenda passed away in Philadelphia. For two decades, Facenda was the voice of NFL films, and it was a voice that left an unmistakable impression on all those who heard it. And as they say in Tinseltown, roll em. John was a pioneer in television news starting in 1948. He anchored and reported for WCAU-TV in Philadelphia until he left on a typically cheerful note in 1973. Be happy for me, because I am content. But John did not leave broadcasting. His voice still carried into the homes of football fans. It was a voice you could not forget. Commitment to excellence. The motto of the race. We would get letters here at NFL Films, the voice of God, or the voice of doom, or the retreat from Dunkirk voice. People had so many different, they, they didn't know his name, but they knew the voice. The sound of his voice is as much a part of the National Football League as the roar of the crowd and the crunch of helmets and pads. And the legend lives on. I'm John Facenda. Irv, you, of course, knew John very well over in Philadelphia. Was he a big fan of the Eagles? Well, he's a big Eagle fan and, of course, one of the most gentle people they ever want to meet. We're going to miss oh, him. He'll really be missed, won't he? All right. Irv, we do have... Uh, an update right now from around the league. We have one more score that just occurred. The St. Louis Cardinals on a touchdown pass from Neil Lomax, 22 yards to Marsh. And now they have pulled to within five points of the Dolphins. It is now 19-14 there in the second quarter. 
Send you back to Soldier Field right now, and here's Pat Summerall and John Madden. Pat? All right, Brent, the situation here is the Cowboys lead the Bears 17-14. Just to add to that tribute to John Pacenda, I knew him quite well, John, and he did the highlight films. Almost all the teams, including your Oakland Raiders, requested that he do the highlight films. They just wouldn't let anybody else do it. That's what we said. You know, they had different producers and, and writers and directors, but Al Davis always said one thing. We always want the voice of John Pacenda. So we send our condolences along with everybody else. John, let's get back to what's going on here at Soldier Field. The Bears let the clock run out, a chance to tie the game just before the end of the first half. Right. The Bears really played very well in the first half. They did everything to at least be tied. Bob Thomas missed one field goal. Then at the half, I really felt that they didn't do a good job there, that maybe running the first one to Peyton was okay, but I think they had a pass on second down. And then on that third down, if you're going to throw the ball, you have to get it out of bounds or in the end zone. You can't complete a pass and then let the clock run out. It's 17-14 Cowboys, and if the first half is any indication, we're in for a great second half of football here at Soldier Field. So we'll be right back with that in just a minute. It is a cool but delightful day in Chicago, and a delightful first half it's been, too, as the Cowboys lead the Bears 17-14, and Raphael Septian about to start the second half. He kicks in the direction of Dennis Gentry. Chases him a yard or two deep into the end zone. Gentry decides to come out. Taken down by Bill Pates. Walter Payton, 130 yards in the first half he had. Our producer, Bob Stenner, is a friend of the great Jim Browns. Talked to him just moments ago. Asked him how he felt, told him what was going on, the fact that Payton had had such a great first half, and Jim said, that's, that's just terrific. He's a great back. That's the up-to-date situation. Walter Payton chasing Jim Brown and closing in. Peyton and Suey, the two running backs for the Bears, they start from their own 17-yard line. Jim McMahon is still the quarterback. Flags are down. Somebody jumped. Peyton is still jumping people. Michael Downs and John Dutton tripped him up. Looked like the Cowboys might have been offside, but we'll see what happens. There is a penalty marker on the field. Was the Cowboys. Sometimes, you know, when a game starts, you have to kind of get settled down. And then after halftime, that happens a little too. You get in there and you had that little break and you got to drink of water, talk to the coaches, and you have to kind of get settled down and get in, get into the routine of the play. Well, you know that Tom Landry and... Offside, number 51, first down. Dickerson offside. First. It'll be first and five. Started to take to say Tom Landry and Ernie Stotner both said to the defensive unit, hey, wait a minute. We gotta stop this guy. Yeah, maybe that's enough for the control. He'd use the word during the week of control, and maybe now he said, now we gotta stop him. Bears go quick count. Suey the ball carrier, and they converge on him quickly. Heckman. There's Jay Saldy. He's getting to play from Mike Ditka going in. I saw Jay as we're walking in the stadium today and said, how does it feel like playing against your old team? He said, I don't know. I've never done it before. It's the first time Ditka and Landry have ever faced each other as coaches. So it's second down and four. So he got one. Line of scrimmage, the Bear 23. Although Jay did say it'd be just like a scrimmage. He said for years that we used to practice against each other. So it'd just be like that. No big deal. Golf swings to the other side. The goal with two tight ends. Salty the forehead. McMahon is chased. McMahon throws it upfield. Intended for Moorhead. Under heavy pressure. Mike Heckman and Too Tall Jones applied the heat. Randy White also was pursuing. That's one thing about McMahon is you never have him. You know, and, and, and a quarterback that can move like that can sure buy a lot of time. You know, he gets in trouble, he looks, he can't see, and then boom, he gets out to either side. He looks like he'd have trouble seeing out of that helmet. Yeah, he got a lot of face mask on there, but he's been wearing that type of thing for long. He's used to it. Four out of five. In the old days, that was a defensive line. You know, that could have been left for Bill George or someone yeah. around here laying around the locker room. From the shotgun, he goes. Hand off to Peyton. He's got some room and some blockers. 
He'll have the first down, taken down by Dennis Thurman. That's a good call. It was a good call. It's the second time they've done that from the shotgun. They ran a sweep that time to Peyton. Earlier, we saw they ran a draw from that. But watch how he gets out here. Peyton gets a handoff. Now watch the both guards pull and see how he waits for it. He, he sets up their block, sets them up, waits, wait, then gives them a dip. That helps that first guard, and then he goes to the outside and gets a first down. Still, it's take, it takes three of those defensive backs to get him down. There's now with some breathing room. Move out to their own 34, first and 10. Peyton again. Doesn't look like much, but it's still four yards. I'll tell you, those are the four that you have to get. You know, on, on first down, to be able to get that four or five yards and then start at second and five, that's a nice down to play on. 22 carries, 145 yards for Peyton. Maybe Tom Lander is saying now, let's control him. Let's keep him under 200 yards. Maybe. That's some control. Well, that'd be better if they could do that in the second half than they did in the first half. Well, Tom couldn't come up with enough, enough nice things to say, enough complimentary things to say about Peyton last night. When he talked to McMahon rolling. McMahon comes on out of the pocket. Comes on out of bounds. Chased out by Dexter Clinkscale. He got a couple. Break is going on with Rusty Lish. What nice things to say, enough complimentary things to say about Peyton last night. When to him. McMahon rolling. McMahon comes on out of the pocket. Comes on out of bounds. Chased out by Dexter Clinkscale. He got a couple. A little break is going on with Rusty Lish. One of the Cowboys. Jeff Rohr, I think, was over in the middle of that one. Maybe it was Heckman. It was Heckman. Old Heckman get up there. I wonder if I wonder if uh, Rusty Lish said something to him, or I know he wouldn't hit him. I know. I mean, no backup quarterback ever hits a linebacker on the Unless sideline. he went to Notre Dame. Let's see if we can see it. There's Lish right there. Mike did get just very restrained. Yeah, well, he has that necktie on. Right, yeah, that, that helps him with his composure, he says. Look at Lish. He said, what did I do? Hey, I'm not a physical guy. Third down. Peyton is the lone setback. He stays. The block. McMahon overthrows Jay Salvi. And for the first time today, the Bears will have to punt. Look at that. McMahon's only thrown six passes all day. Of course, you talk about your, your great running backs and what they've done. Uh, Walter Payton today has really been a one-man gang. The first Chicago punt of the day, that's Gary Allen, number 31, and Finzer gets off the kick. It's a good high hanger. Allen lets it bounce. It goes out of bounds. He had in mind catching it. He just couldn't catch up with it. 22-yard punt. No return. It hung up there a long time. 17-14, third quarter at Soldier Field. At Tom Landry gazing at Walter Payton. What do you think he's got on his mind? I think everyone keys on Walter Payton. When he had, you know, the middle linebacker, the outside, the defensive lineman, the defensive back, and the coach just stares at him. I'm watching him. He needs 77 yards to catch Jim Brown. Well, set in springs the two running backs for the Dallas Cowboys. Hold the boom. He's back to throw on first down. Cut Donnelly. Knocked down at the last minute by Leslie Frazier. Donnelly is yelling that he was interfered with. I think that was pretty good coverage by, by Frazier on that play. But you're right here at the end here. Here's Frazier will come in from the outside. Donnelly doesn't look like he's running full speed. Frazier just gets right in there and hits the ball. No, that's all right. I think that's the first pass that they've thrown thus far to Doug Donnelly all day. Thus far. Second attempt to Donnelly. Second down and 10. Ball up to Dallas, 36. Dorsett. Hit in the backfield and taken down in the backfield. Minus yards. He only had eight yards at the beginning of the day. Mike Hartenstein was the first man to hit him. 
Long day for Dorsett. Walter Payton is going for 200. Dorsett's going for 10. There's Jim Schaffner. He's flashing the signals in to Gary Hogaboom. Cowboys used to switch guards, and now they're going to the Tom Landry calls it the flash system. And they keep, keep Herbert Scott in there. They must feel he's doing the job on Hampton. Hampton moves over in front of the center down. Out of the shotgun is Hogaboom. They get it out to Dorsett, who gets away from one man, but not another. First there was Richard Dent, and again, the fair defense. Dave Durison came up to make the final hit that brought down Dorsett. I think the Bears needed that. It kind of livened up the crowd and the team again because they went in at halftime down. When they had that nice drive and didn't get any points out of it, you could feel if they were down. I felt they were a little down coming back on the field, and maybe they're getting a little lift on that from that defense. Danny White back to punt. Jeff Fisher back deep to the bear. What win there is, White is putting, coming against. Better kick this time. Good kick. Fisher hit by Bates. The first man there. And a late hit from somebody. And now Fracas. There's a 44-yard punt by Danny White. Well, that's good. You notice the officials stopped calling stuff on that. They used to throw flags, call it on both sides, and it wasn't anything anyway. 17-14, 11.06, third quarter. Next, you'll see the New York Giants against the Los Angeles Rams in the Northeast and in the Southern California. Lawrence Taylor chasing Anthony Dickerson. Atlanta will be at San Francisco, and that's the rest of the lineup that you'll see around the country. Right here, we're at Soldier Field. 11.06 left third quarter. Dallas 17, Bears 14. It almost looks like the Bears are winning, but they're not. Peyton, the deep back. McMahon fakes to Peyton. Throws incomplete. Pass might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Pay uh, McMahon was chased by Randy White. And he might have gotten an arm up and deflected it. Was either deflected or uh, you know they were saying that during the week that Jim McMahon really wasn't throwing well and that ball did flutter a little on him. Let's watch Randy White here 54. Oh Peyton will take him on. No no one touched that ball. It just wobbled out of there. I think so you know and of course that you know when he was telling us the other day about his broken hand he said the thing that bothers the most is once he releases the ball there's no ball in his hand to follow through. On a draw play to Suey. Gets good yardage before he's tripped up by Randy White. Not enough for a first down, but about five nevertheless. You know what McMahon could be doing is, is since that's when it hurts. You know, once you let go of the ball and you have that, that snap on the hand, maybe, and maybe doesn't even know it, but he could have readjusted or adjusted his, you know, that snap and that follow through because uh, that was a funny looking pass. He calls good plays. You see the way he gets right down there in there? Okay, he takes the strap off. Yeah. No. Dallas in their 4 0 defense, which is seven defensive backs. Now he rolls to the right, gets away from the pressure. Dennis McKinnon, a diving catch, an excellent catch, and a bare first down. 11 yards. Ron Fellows on the coverage. Now that was an organized scramble there. Watch him. He's going to get the ball. Just sprint right out to his right. You see him and the blockers are forming, getting up, keeping everyone to the inside. Then he gets McKinnon, just pops him out there for the first down. But that was an organized scramble on that one. Let's see how he throws this one. Follows through. It looks pretty good to me. They all look good when they're complete, though. Heck. And they get first downs. Good catch by McKinnon, who comes wide right this time. Willie Gold is out to the left side. 17 14 the score. The Bears are at their own 49 yard line. At the line of scrimmage, a fumble. Still loose. Bears got it back. A rare fumble by Walter Payton. Ed Jones made the hit that caused it. I'm saying, woo, we need those. He says, we don't need those. Ditka said we just can't turn the ball over. We're not a team that can come from behind and throw it. They're close, 
Cowboys. Second and eight. Cowboy 49 now is the line of scrimmage. Big C, the Chicago Bears in the middle of the field. Cannon sprinting in motion. The inside handoff to Suey. Mike Eggman had it red. Look at Randy White. He's complaining there to someone. He, and, I, and I bet he's saying someone held him. Defensive linemen always do that. They always talk about someone's holding. Someone's always holding. See, he's the guy in the funny stance there in the right. See if we can see anyone hold. Yeah, yeah, right there. See, so he said he had the left. Hand. Look, then he's still going after him. That was something. That, that was Mark Borch was pulling him and grabbing him and holding him. I'll tell you, Borch has done a good job. Passing plays, no sacks by White. He had two hurry ups. They've run 37 times. Randy White's only made four tackles. That's a pretty good day's work for Borch. Third eight, McMahon back in the shotgun. Randy White. Got around McMahon's feet. He's going to take off. Look out, Tim. There are the flags all over the place. Bill Bates, number 40 for the Cowboys in the middle of the thumping and running. McMahon had a bad back. He didn't know if he could take a hit or not. Jim McMahon is the type of guy that doesn't know how to look out. You know, most quarterbacks would have gotten that much yardage and ran out of bounds. Jim McMahon doesn't know how to do that. Bill Bates doesn't know how to find a pile, though. I think he's been away for four games. And there's no foul against contact. Dallas. Flags everywhere. It's a bad place to get into a fracas in front of the other bench. Unnecessary roughness, number 40. First down. Let's see if we can see the end of the play. Now, here's Bates. He's number 40. He's there. He's the guy. Now, here comes McMahon. He's going to scramble out here to his right. Now, watch. Now, you think when he gets upfield here and he starts to run, he'll go out of bounds. Not McMahon. He stops and then turns upfield. You see, now he's down, and there was a late hit right there, Bill Bates. Here comes Bates. See, he's down. Boom, that helmet right in him. Can't do that, Bill. That was a legitimate call. Here's McMahon to throw, scrambling out again. Look out. Oh, McMahon got hammered in the back by Too Tall Jones. If he took that one, he's going to be okay. Intended for Peyton. I'll tell you, that one... I think we could see it, and Jim McMahon couldn't see it, because watch him. He's going to roll out here to the right, and then two tall end Randy White are coming from his backside. He has to stop and look. Ooh, geez, that hurt from up here. Did you see that head snap? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ed Jones applied the hit. Second and 10. Bears operating from the Dallas 26 now. 7.43 left to play third quarter. Cowboys lead by three. Peyton in motion. McMahon gets to Suey. Suey to about the 22-yard line. Mike Downs came up to make the stop. It'll be third. And about five for the Bears. You know, it's interesting that the, uh, that the Bear offensive line now has Andy Frederick in there at right tackle. Of course, he's the ex-Cowboy offensive tackle, and I don't know if something happened to Van Horn or Frederick's just in there because they think he can play too tall because he knows him or something. I see Van Horn on the sideline. Looks, looks to be okay. McMahon again running to the right, and again he has some room. Intended for Willie Gold, and it's ruled incomplete. No interference. Dennis Thurman, the defender. Everson Walls also there. And Bob Thomas is already on the field. Here's Willie Gault. He's going against Everson Walls here. But he's going to run it out. He's going to stop, go to the outside. Walls just stopped right with him and was right on him all the way. I'll tell you, eventually, eventually, the Bears are going to be a better offensive team when they can start getting the ball more to Willie Gault. And when they can get McMahon well again, when they can do that. And when they can make a field goal. That would help. 38-yard attempt by Bob Thomas. Down 
Did they wait too long? Let's see what's going on. I think Bob Thomas missed the field goal anyway, so this could That's be a one big thing. break for him. That's one part of it. Mike Ditka not quite sure what happened yet. Again, the discussion. Freddie Wyant will tell us. Now it's against the Bears, because when they talk to the Cowboys, you know it's against the Bears. We have false start, number 73, fourth down. Still fourth down. And Thomas will have another crack at it. Well, I wonder, Thomas must have made that then. That must have been good, because... Uh, I didn't see any indication from any of the officials as to whether it was good or not. This is from 43 yards. Thomas will try again. No. Hit the upright. Thomas hit the right upright. And the field goal is no good, and the Cowboys cling to that three-point lead. The Bears have sure had their opportunities. That's the second field goal that they've missed, and then just before halftime when they didn't get any scores out of there. Watch it. He had everything right, except he just needed a little more oomph. Hit the upright. Did not go through. Didn't get the bounce. Frustrated Bob Thomas. Dallas still leading 17-14, but clinging to that lead. Coming up next here on CBS, you'll see Atlanta, San Francisco in the southeast, northwest, and northern California. Falcons with their great quarterback Steve Bartkowski and the 49ers. I don't know if they're going, John, with uh, Montana or Kavanaugh, do you? I don't know, but they have so much offense that they can go without Montana and still beat most teams. But I did hear that Montana is starting today. And that's the rest of our slate here on CBS. Right now, we've got a dandy at Soldier Field. 17-14 Cowboys leading, but the Bears dominating. To Dorset. Now he's got some room. Dorset. It's only a matter of time. Richardson got him out of bounds. Fensick is shaken up for the Bears. Can't get up. And now has to finally sit down. Dorset carry. Yes, Gary. Dorset now on 23 yards on that carry has 10 carries for 27. What he did here is he starts into the right and and he gets the whole Bear defense in there. You see, he bounces off as one guy. The whole defense converged. Dorset just kept going and bounced to the outside. So the Cowboys get a first down on the biggest game of the day, gain of the day by Dorset. Off under his own power. Let's get back to that field goal situation, John, and clarify, if we can, what happened. Well, what happened is the whistle blew before Thomas kicked the first one because they moved. So that one didn't count anyway. Then they had to go back five yards in the course of the history. So it's still 17-14 Cowboys. Hold the boom. Over the head uh, of Doug Cosby the is tight end. Let's again check on some of the other scores. The Jets in New England tied at 14 all third quarter. Buffalo and Indianapolis now tied 10-10 third quarter. Cleveland and Kansas City tied 3-3 third quarter. Finally, we got somebody winning. Miami 26, St. Louis 14. Dan Marino's hit twice for touchdown. Seattle 10, Minnesota 6 third quarter. Hold the boom out of the shotgun second and 10. Bear, uh, Cowboy first down, Bear 37. Leslie Frazier, the defender. Looked like there's something wrong with that coverage. Look how far off uh, Frazier is. And then Renfro makes the cut, and then he reacts very slowly on that, like he was expecting some help or some underneath help from a linebacker because he sure didn't react to that play. He kept looking. He never looked at the receiver. He looked back into the backfield the whole time. He was looking, which probably meant zone. See, in fact, he's upset about that. He was expecting, he had the deep outside, and someone was supposed to have that short outside. Gary Fensick, by the way, is back in the Bear secondary. And coming up for a closer look, it's Dorsett. Dorsett wheels to the Bears. In town, inside the Bear 30, Todd Bell came up to stop him. Dorsett now 11 carries, 35 yards. I guess the only way to stop Walter Payton is to keep the ball away from him. 
And I think that's what the Cowboys want to do early in the first half. They just couldn't couldn't get any running down. And uh, they would try that and they were ended up third and long. But now Dorsett is starting to run. See, he has his 35 yards. <coughs> Payton has 147. And the best way to stop Walter Payton is to keep your offense on the field and his off. That may be the only way. Second and two. Hampton almost jumped, got back, didn't hit anybody. Newsom almost had a touchdown. He is being covered by Wilbur Marshall and had a couple of steps on him. Hogaboom might have thrown him a little bit, a little bit too far to the right. I'm sure that the Cowboys have been setting that play up all day because Wilbur Marshall is a rookie. He was a number one draft choice of the Cowboys. He's starting in place of Otis Wilson today. Anytime you get a veteran team and a veteran coach like a Tom Landry, they always look for that rookie and try and fool him and get him one on one. Dorsett goes out and Newsom and Springs stay in the backfield. Hogaboom is 11, uh, 10 of 17 for 187 yards on the day. This time he operates under the center on third down. Bears don't get much of a rush. They do get a great defensive play, but a flag. Gary Fensick, the defender, penalty marker down. It's against the Bears. Richardson back there with Fensick on defense. I'll tell you, you know, the Bears had all the opportunities that you could ask for in this game, and they played very well. But when you don't get those field goals, you don't get those scores just before the half, sometimes it's going to come back and haunt you. It always does. Holding 98. First down. Holding on Tyrone Keys. It's a Dallas first down as they move within range, certainly now, of Raphael Septien. I wonder who Tyrone Keys was holding. They usually don't call that on defensive linemen unless they grab a back or a tight end trying to come off the line. I think he grabbed Ron Springs trying to come out of the backfield. It's back to Dorsett. Dorsett wrapped up quickly by Tyrone Keys and Richard Dent. Down by Take a look at Hogaboom. He's had a bad right wrist and a bad right elbow, and he's got a long sleeve on his right arm to protect that bad elbow. That's one of those things, you know, you want to, when you fall, they always try and stay off their hands. You don't want to get that right hand down. So a lot of times you fall on that elbow. Second and 11. See if he can find some time. He does. Cosby finds an opening. Cosby struggling for the first down. He might be a little bit short. Mike Singletary was a defender. He is about a yard shy. You know, Doug Cosby's a guy this year for the Cowboy passing attack that really has to pick up a lot of the slack because they lost so many guys. You know, Tony Hill is out with an injury. Drew Pearson retired. Butch Johnson was traded. And Doug Cosby has to pick up a lot of that slack this year because they just don't seem to get the ball to their outside receivers as much as they used to. Brian Salonen came in with the play, number 89. Third and short. I bet it's a short yardage run. Don't know what happened. Nothing going on. He must have just nudged his center and tried to get it on a quarterback sneak. Maybe the Cowboys are going to go. Raphael stepped in, started to run in, and then they called him back. Now they're going to let him go in there. Well, you got to go for the field goal. Good defense, and now with Septien in here, this guy's probably as reliable a kicker as there is in the National Football League. Well, I'm sure. It's been a long time since he's missed from inside the 40. You can't say anything is automatic, but... Uh, with him kicking him, it's as close to automatic as you can get. That Hogaboom holding, you can see the 30-second clock in the background back there. You better snap it in a hurry. Finally, they do. Septian is good. 32 yards for Raphael Septian, and it's the Cowboys 20. The Bears 14. We have just over three and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter at Soldier Field, Chicago. Dallas 20 now, Chicago 14, third quarter. Coming up next, those of you in Philadelphia, Washington, and Dallas will see the Philadelphia Eagles against the resurging Washington Redskins. 
They look like they're back on track, John, don't they? I think so. Of course, they started off with those two losses, and then the last two games, they looked like the old Redskins. And I think they'll be one of the teams that'll be there at the end. You saw the rest of the slate. You'll see here on CBS, Septian, who just kicked that field goal, ready to kick off. This is a good kickoff. Chases Dennis Gentry deep into the end zone. He follows it. Now comes out. With it. Cowboys get it down inside the 15. Good coverage. Steve Diossi was down to make the hit. Next Sunday, the NFL Today on CBS will bring you a feature on Richard Todd. In Todd, we trust. I don't know if Bum Phillips said those words or not, but we'll find out. Check your local listings. Well, the NFL Today next Sunday. Soldier Field in Chicago, Pat Summerall and John Madden. The Bears have it deep in their own territory, their own 13. Cowboys leading 20 to 14. Just over three minutes left to play third quarter. Suey makes the move in the backfield. Peyton back there by himself, and that's Suey in motion. He did about five different dances. Peyton dances too. Gets down after a gain of about one. Mike Heckman came over to stop him, number 58. Run down by Heckman. And white. After the games are over, all of our CBS crew lives at various spots around the country. Rush for O'Hare's at the Chicago airport, all but one. <laughs> My colleague, John Madden, and that's the train waiting for you, John. Well, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go. You know, we all yeah. don't have to fly. I mean, this is a little slower, but uh, a lot more fun. You get to meditate a lot, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Second down, McMahon back to throw. Has some time. Trying to set up a screen, but the Cowboys read it too well. Suey gets out of trouble. Gets back in. Gets out just outside the 15. Jim Jeffco. Ed Jones had a good job, or did a good job, I should say, of reading screen, feeling screen coming, and backed off. He sure did. Too tall Jones started to rush the passer, saw the screen, backed off. Then McMahon saw Too tall back off. Suey saw him back off, so he made a move back to the inside. Now that play didn't look like much, but it was a pretty alert play. One by Too Tall, and then again by McMahon, and then a third time by Suey. A lot of thinking and stuff going on out there. When Too Tall backs off, it's like the Hancock building. Third and seven. McMahon, out of the shotgun, scrambles up the middle. He'll get the first down. He is down, but he does get that first down. Out to the 25. With a bad hand and a bad back. He does a good job. I like Jim McMahon. Someday, this guy is going to be one of the top quarterbacks in this league. He has all, all the ingredients that you need. I mean, he is a tough guy. And I think that's one of the first things that a quarterback has to have. You can't hear footsteps. You can't hear people. You do what you have to to get the job done. You know, you don't think about quarterbacks being tough guys. But I remember you telling me once that when you had Ken Stabler, he was one of the toughest guys you had. That was the thing about him. And that, I had more respect for Stabler and his toughness. Joe Namath was a tough guy. Maybe because they played for Bear Bryant, but they were tough guys. That's Peyton in motion. They're going to look for Suey. Suey is going to look for Peyton. Knocked down at the last minute. Emerson Walls got there, got there to deflect it. Dayton was about a step and a half behind everybody. Clink scale came over to help out. I'll tell you, he had him, but it looked like Suey just held it a little too long because you can see where he stops. Now, right there, now Peyton has him here. He hasn't beat, he hasn't beat by five yards. Suey held it a little too long, lofted it a little too much, and Everson Walls is the type of guy who you can beat a little, but you can't keep him beat. He gets back in a hurry. I mean, he had him. Peyton had him. It was a oh, nice yeah. move. He stopped and then went right by him. But Everson Walls doesn't stay beaten. Second down and 10 for the Bears from their own 25. McMahon fakes the draw play. Looks deep. Has Moorhead wide open. With a good arm, good hand, I should say. I would imagine that that pass, McMahon would have gotten there. He had Moorhead wide open, and the ball just got away from him. Watch him here. Here's Moorhead, 87 here. Look, he's wide open. And the ball was high, and as McMahon threw it, it just took off on him. You could see it just sail. McMahon discussed it with himself. You were talking about his toughness and how much you liked him as a leader and a quarterback. 
Mike Ditka said when they drafted him and he came to negotiate his contract, he got out of the limousine with a beer in his hand. Ditka said, what can we do? We drafted him. <laughs> he was ours. <laughs> for better or for worse. Sits out at 12 for second nine. He operates out of the shotgun. This time he rolls left. Gonna take off again. Flag is down. Bates made the tackle. Penalty marker down back at the Bear 25. McMahon is close to a first down. Brought down by Bates. There is a penalty marker on the field. Bears are clapping. It's defensive holding against the Cowboys. You probably wonder why Bill Bates is in there. That's that 4 0 defense of the Cowboys. Bates plays middle linebacker when they go to their seven defensive backs. We have personal foul, personal number foul. 60, first down. Not holding. Penalty is on Don Smerrick. Well, Smerrick is another guy who comes in in that 4 0 defense. Bears move up to midfield with that penalty and a first down at that point. Spirit knows he did it, too. Did you see him? He yep. wasn't shaking his head and complaining. He knew he did it, and he, he had that look of someone who was just yep. caught. He didn't stop and look back. <laughs> he just went right to the bench. It, it stayed away from Coach Tom Landry, I'm sure. 38 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Dallas 20, Bears 14. A fake to Peyton. Give to Suey. Dexter Clinkscale came up to make the tackle. He's had to make a lot today. You know, yesterday when we were talking to Mike Ditka, he said he was worried about Sue. He said he's really banged up. He said he just has injuries all over his body. He said he'll start. I don't know how much he can go. He said we may play Calvin Thomas quite a bit. Of course, Sue is doing well, and he's played the whole game. Mike said he just gives you so much. He really does. Good blocker. Reliable, certainly steady ball carrier. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Dallas 20, the Chicago Bears 14, and we now pause for a word from your local station. After a very productive first half, Walter Payton has been quiet through most of the third quarter. He, he now start the fourth. McMahon fakes, chased by White. the interception intended for Dennis McKinnon Peyton in fact in the first half carried the ball 20 times made 130 yards in this half he's carried only four times for 18 yards I'll tell you you know the Bears uh, are only down six points and I'm sure that they can you know get back to Peyton I, I don't think they ought to leave that if they were you know two or three touchdowns down maybe they should get away from that run but I think I'd kind of stay with old Walter there and uh, you know, keep pounding that thing in there because it was successful in the first half. I don't see many adjustments that the Cowboys have made. No. Third down and seven for the Bears. McMahon from the spread. McMahon fires and fires low. Cowboys are saying it's incomplete. And it turns out that they might be right. Brian Bashnagel. Try to trap it off the ground. Carl Howard was the nearest defender. The Bears will have to punt. And again, Bashnagel was open, and McMahon just didn't get the ball to him. I think it, it bounced in front of him. See that? It's right there. It yep. did hit the ground, and that was just a poor pass by Jim McMahon. Dave Finzer will come in to punt for the Bears, and Gary Allen back deep for the Cowboys. It looked like he was going to take off. Now he hangs it high for Allen. Flags are down. Ball is knocked out of balance by the Bears. I think it hit the end zone line. Doesn't gonna... make any difference. I think the penalty is going to be against the Bears anyway, probably for someone leaving early. standing inside the one yard line indicating that the Bears were successful in knocking it out of bounds at that point but because of Finzer's delay when he hesitated ineligible downfield the whole line fourth down that's 
what happens. You see the line does it on timing. They go like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, then they go. They don't look back at Finzer to see when the ball's kicked. Now you would like to say, well, you hear it kick, but when you get a big crowd like this, those guys don't hear it. They're just counting and going. That threw the whole thing off. Gary Allen is number 31 for the Cowboys. Standing back deep, Finzer is at his own 33. Gets off a fine punt, a dandy. Allen feels it at the 10. Is hit down at the 14. Good coverage. Ron Rivera, number 59, the Bears' second round draft choice. Down to make the hit. It's Dallas 20, Chicago 14. BS Sports, those of you in the Midwest and in San Diego will see the Detroit Lions at San Diego. Those Detroit Lions have been sort of a frustrating team. Hard to understand. And the Chargers, after a great effort on Monday night against the Raiders, will have a job bouncing back, I'm sure. That's the rest of the lineup. Little change in the Bear defense, which we'll tell you about in just a minute. Gary Hogaboom, the Dallas quarterback. Tony Dorsett. Handoff is straight ahead for nothing to run spring. Dan Hampton made the stop. We see Richard Dent, number 95, in there now. And Mike Hartenstein is out. Hartenstein was the one that had that had that rib injury. This is how they started. This is how they started to play the game. And now when Hartenstein goes out, then they have to make a couple of moves to get in the same type of defense as they wanted to. Second and seven. Hogaboom quickly into the shotgun. Quickly outside. Mike Renfro with a heck of a catch. Leslie Frazier, the defender. Hogaboom really zipped it. I don't know if you practice those types of things. He was on his back. He was he was sitting down and sliding. And you talk about a quarterback dropping a ball in there. Watch what Hogaboom does. Now watch him. He starts to slide. He's down in the ground and he catches that ball. That that's a place you like to throw that out pattern. Bring him back. Throw it low and outside. That pass will never be intercepted. Never. Of course, it won't be caught like that many times either. He'll slide. He'll hook slide catch. There to bear 30. They're their own 30. Make it hard. Ogaboom again. Donnelly. Donnelly almost sprung to the ground. Is sprung for a loss. After he had about four yards, now he loses yards. Frazier and Bell threw him back. It looks like the Cowboys are starting to go to the outside receivers now. And you can see this year they've been throwing mostly to the backs 40 times. Today they've thrown five to the backs, five to the wide receivers, and three to the tight end. That's pretty good distribution. Donnelly had a five-yard gain. It turned out to be a loss of one, so that makes it second and 11. Ogaboom has put it up 20 times. Newsom is one of the backs. To Dorsett. For a Dallas first down. Bensick tripped him up. But the Cowboys pick up the first. I tell you, Dorsett's another back that can do a lot of things. We see him there. You see what he did? They came on a blitz. He came up through the lineman. He went between his guard and tackle. He faked like he was going to block the blitz, just let him go by, and then he sneaked right in the middle. Third reception for Dorsett, 77 yards gain. Big one, the 68-yard screen pass. They scored the Cowboys' first touchdown. Donnelly is wide right. This is Dorsett again. Got a couple. These are the times that you want to be able to run the ball. And on defense, of course, you want to be able to stop that run because you have the lead. Your defense has been on the field a lot, and what you want to do is be able to control the ball. And that's what the Cowboys are trying to do right now. Not let the Bears get it back. Ball control, run it, short passes, those types of control things. Both teams three and one coming into this game. Eleven minutes left to play in the fourth quarter. Hogaboom has Dorsett as the lone setback. Newsom was in motion. It's Dorsett. He's going to go no play. Wilbur Marshall and Richard Dent made the stop. There is 
there's a penalty against the Bears, I think it must be a face mask violation. It looked like a face mask. There's a penalty marker on the field. Wilbur Marshall did make a nice tackle, though. He stayed there square, the perfect tackle. Face mask, number 95. On Richard Dent. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty, which simply means he didn't mean to do it. Mike Dick could give that work gum a workout, won't he? Well, he sure is now, because those are frustrating type things. You know, when you stop the guy for no gain and, and you have that penalty, and that gives him five more. Tom's there. He's trying to find a good play, a good third down and short yardage play. You know, a play that can gain him about three yards is what he wants here. That's all they need for another first down. Now what's wrong? Should be second down. I thought so. Second down. Right. Well, you're in Chicago. <laughs> See, and Tom's saying, wait, I called a third down play. It should have been a second down play. Jim Schaffner said, that's okay. It'll work anyway, coach. Tom says, okay. Then he walks away. By the half, you can see what's happened. That is total offense, so it's now second and two. Rafferty in the center up over the ball. Goal 53. That probably means nothing. Dorsett gets less than nothing. Dan Hampton. Up quickly. That big guy has really been playing well. I'm sure that's not what goal 53 meant, where you give it to Dorsett and a bunch of guys on black jerseys jump on him. <laughs> no. Here comes Ron Springs in with the third down play. Well, that's a play that he probably wanted to run anyway. See, now he already thought he had it before. Now he'll get it here. Now they need four instead of two for the first down. That's now third coming alive. Excuse me, that's a passing down. This is a passing down. Springs up on the left, and Hogaboom agrees with you. The incomplete intended for Conley. They really had him covered, and here's the penalty marker now. Todd Bell and Gary Fensick were the defenders. All oh, that arguing's not going to do any good. Here comes Fensick, though. Maybe it was one of those inadvertent flags. I didn't mean to throw it. Or maybe it was against the offense. The ball was touched before he was hit by the defender. No penalty. No penalty. Well, you know, one thing, sometimes officials are criticized for talking it over. In this situation, I think it's a good thing. See, they say that, you know, the ball was already there before he touched it. Well, the old Todd Bell thought it was against him. He was just going to stay there until... He got some good news. Danny White back to kick for Dallas. Jeff Fisher back deep for the Bears, and Danny White has been known to run with it. Another good kick. Oh, great kick by Danny White. Bounds at the three-yard line. 49-yard punt out of bounds at the three by Danny White. Those of you in New Orleans and Houston will see the Saints against the Oilers next. Bob Phillips got a very strong football team. And the rest of the slate coming up on CBS. Giants, Rams, Atlanta, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Washington. Rusty Lish is now the quarterback for the Bears. McMahon is sitting down. Lish gets to Peyton. Peyton barrels out just shy of the 10-yard line. Stopped by Randy White. Nothing is wrong with McMahon is the information that we have just been given. But he has taken some pretty good hits on some of his scrambles, and he has a bad finger, bad thumb, and a bad back. You can see it padded right there. I bet that's what it is, though. I bet it's that hand, because he just couldn't get anything on the ball. He probably didn't have a strong grip. Second three to get
it to Peyton again. Now they stop it. Penalty marker down. Flag is down. Looked like the left guard, uh, Mark Borch, jumped a little early on that one against the Bears. When you block Randy White, you try and get all the advantages you can get. Ball start. Left guard. Left guard. Watch a tight look here. I mean, if you see a Randy White on you, a guy that big, and you want, you know, and you have to block him man to man, you want to get started a little early. That was a nice block, though. Good yeah. practice. He just went about a half a count early. He said, I just want my fair advantage. Dallas been penalized five times for 45 yards. That's the sixth penalty against the Bears. Rusty Lish, who last year played with St. Louis. This is Matsui. Gets away from Dickerson almost. Dickerson got the hand on him and dragged him down with help from Jetcoat. Sue, he has stuff wrapped around his neck and everything. He does look like he's been in a battle. With that neck thing, he got it. Most of those collars stop about halfway around the neck. His goes all the way around. He doesn't want that head to be able to be jammed backwards nor forward. Suey comes out. Peyton. And Calvin Thomas are now the setbacks. Third down. Key down right here for the Bears. Rusty Lish, the quarterback. Draw play, Calvin Thomas. Still fighting. But it'll be fourth down as Jim Jeffcoat finally got Calvin to the ground. Clock running 8.40 left to play in the game with Dallas leading the Bears 20 to 14. Fourth and two at the 11. There's Rusty Lish. I'm sure the Bears are thinking or will be after this game about all the opportunities they missed just before the halftime, the two missed field goals and some inopportune penalties. Finzer back to kick. Gary Allen back deep. Good kick. Chases Allen back to his own 39-yard line. He heads straight up the field. This is Gary Allen back into Bear territory. Flags are down. Way back in Dallas territory, and they'll bring it back. It was a good return. But Victor Scott, I think, has been called for an illegal block. I saw the block. I thought it was a pretty good block. It sure was a late call, because he made the block, and then the ball carries about 20 yards by him before those flags came out. It was a heck of a hit, and the officials may have thought that it was illegal, but it uh, looked pretty good from up here. Well, maybe we'll have a little, another look. It was either Victor Scott Illegal or Emerson block Wall. In the back, number 22. First down. It was Victor Scott. Let's see if we can see it here. It's right there. I think that's a good block. I, you know, the thing is, if the head's in front, the head has to be in front. That looked like it was in front. It was in front. I don't think there's much question about it. Anyway, they brought it back. It's 2014 Dallas. Let's see if we can watch that block again. It's going to be right here in the right side of the screen uh, where Victor Scott gets called. And it sure looked right here it is. Now, this looks like a pretty good block right there. See, his head has to be in front, and you can see that his head is in front. That was a legal block. It was just a good block. That was one penalty against the Cowboys. It shouldn't have been. It was so good, the officials, as you said a minute ago, probably thought it had to be illegal. That's right. If anyone hits anyone that hard and knocks them down, uh, it has to be illegal. That wasn't. First and 10 for the Cowboys, their own 33. It's Springs and Newton. Ogaboom, Cosby. First down. Good catch by Cosby. Boy, that 6-6 six, six target is helpful. Single Terry made the tackle and Cosby stays down. Fourth reception of the day. You know, Cosby has had a bad knee and uh, uh, he's been in and out of practice all, all the time. It finally gets better by Sunday, but uh, I hope it's not that knee that he's been having trouble with, although it looks like it's a right leg that they're looking at now. Because I would think offensively right now, Doug Cosby could be the most valuable player on this Cowboy team. And I think Hogaboom thinks so too. Do you see who the He's first down guy there to there? look and look quickly? Cosby up, but up a little gingerly and limping. Up 
tell you, Doug Cosby is one of the nicest guys in this league. Don't forget to coming up tonight here on CBS, the all new 60 Minutes, a special two hour preview. First and 10 Cowboys, their own 48. Ogaboom to Dorset. Dorset swings around the corner. Is met hard. It's out of bounds. It was Mike Richardson who came up to make the hit. A tough four yards for Tony Dorset. Here's Cosby. It is that right knee. You know, he's had trouble with that knee. He had trouble in uh, training camp, and he's had trouble every week with it. It looks like he may have re-injured that knee that's been giving him the problem. As I was saying, you know, there's a lot of things in the National Football League, and there's some great players, and there's some average players, some poor ones, and some good people, average and poor ones. And Doug Fosby is one of the good players, one of the good guys. So Fred Cornwell has taken his place at tight end. The rookie. Dorsett with room. And Dorsett gets inside the bare 45 to the 44. Richard Dent made the stop. They're about two yards short of a first down. Let's check out the scores around the league. New England 28. The Jets apparently don't have it all back together. 28-14 the score. Buffalo and Indianapolis tied now at 17, third quarter. Cleveland 6, Kansas City 3, Miami 33, St. Louis 21. That's in the fourth quarter now, as we are at Soldier Field. And Seattle 13 to 9 in the lead over Minnesota. 6.45 left to play as Renfro swings in motion. And Hogaboom goes back to throw. Has Renfro wide open. Renfro inside the bear, 30 stopped by Fencing. In the second half, the Cowboys have kept the Bear defense on the field a long time, and the cracks are starting to show. We just got word from the, Cosby, from the uh, Cowboy bench that Doug Cosby has a twisted right knee. In fact, you can see they're putting ice on it now, and that's the first thing you want to do so it doesn't swell to put ice on it. Twisted right knee, and he won't be back the rest of the game. So the rookie Fred Cornwell will have the rest of the assignment at tight end. And that'll be six minutes coming up. Fred Cornwell looks a lot like Doug Cosby. In fact, he was at USC, and they called him Cosby Jr. He's six, six also. Here's Dorsett. Bangs away over the right side. Gets about four. Steve McMichael made the hit. Dorsett was tackled by Singletary. Here is Fred Cornwell, 6'6 six, six and 236, same size as Cosby. Right, if you'd put a number 84 on his back and a Cosby on his back, you'd say that's Cosby until they start to play. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, in all due respect to <laughs> Corny Cornwell. <laughs> Second and seven at the 26. Set. One of the setbacks. The other was Newsom. Hogaboom looking for Newsom. Al Harris, the defender back there with him, and did an excellent job. That's the thing that they always talk about, that they want to get their backs on your back or man to man. And they did it that time, but Al Harris covered him. Watch Harris. He's step for step with Timmy Newsom right there. In fact, he almost had the interception. Look at it. He used to be a defensive lineman, too. He's saying, Doug, gone. He was a draft choice number 1A by the Bears. They got Dan Hampton the same year they got Al Harris. Here's Hogan out of the shotgun. Going deep. Oh, that's got to be interference. He ran all over Renfro. Leslie Frazier ran over him and stomped on him. You know how you can tell it's against the defense when the official calls it and stays down there. It's against the defense. When the official calls it and runs back towards the offense, it's offensive pass interference. 20-yard penalty. It'll be first and goal. Dallas from the bare six. The ball may have been a little short because watch 21. Leslie Frazier, he's, he's watching. He's looking into it. He gets his hand, his left hand, as he turned to look to the right, he got his left arm up and bumped Renfro. First and goal, Cowboys. Dorsett and Newsom, the setbacks behind Gary Hogaboom. Five minutes, three seconds left to play. Newsom hit at the line of scrimmage. 
maybe got to the five, gained a half yard, perhaps. Dan Hampton was the first man to hit him. Singletary also involved in the stop. Start thinking with a situation like this and having Septi in on the sideline and leading by six, the field goal would be almost as good as a touch. Well, that's probably why they'll just call safe plays in this area. The one thing that the Cowboys can't afford here is a turnover. You, you say Septi ends as automatic as you can get, and a nine-point lead would be enough in this game. Well, so much for safety. Dorsett had it go through his hands. His vision might have been blocked, but that ball was there. That's right, and Hokeboom has so much confidence in that arm that on this play, he really throws into double coverage. They had Dorsett. They have a guy on both sides of him. Watch this. There's a guy on the inside and a guy on the outside, and Hokeboom tried to thread that needle. Well, in fact, he did thread that needle. Got it between them. But that is a dangerous play in that situation. I, I don't care, even though it was incomplete. Harold Carmichael. X. Philadelphia Eagle great split wide to the right. Hogaboom has other people split wide to the left. Takes a long time. Throws high to Carmichael. Who can't get it done. Well, you know what happened? He thought that he had tight coverage. And we see what happened. Mike Richardson, just before the ball was snapped, he dropped off him. And he's just running right there with him. What he wanted to do was have him up in the line and get beyond him. R Richardson looked like he knew that play was coming. I think almost everybody on both benches knew that was coming. I think that's the first play that Harold Carmichael has been in for the Cowboys. That's right. From 24 yards then, Raphael Septien will try to put the Cowboys further ahead. He's hit twice already today. Hogan puts it down. And Septien puts it through. So that makes it Dallas 23, the Bears 14. 4-11 left to play at Soldier Field, Chicago. We're in the fourth quarter. The Cowboys lead by nine. Back at Soldier Field in Chicago where the Cowboys on Raphael Septien's third field goal. Lead 23-14 as Bob Abilene and Rusty Lish Warm up on the sideline behind the bare bench. Septian will kick off. It'll be either Cameron or Durison. Durison about four yards deep into the end zone. Comes out of it. At the 21. A host of Cowboys down quickly to make the stop. College football returns on Saturday, October the 13th, two weeks from now. And you'll see either Illinois against Ohio State with Heisman Trophy candidate Keith Byers or Washington take on Stanford. That's Saturday, October the 13th at 3.30 Eastern Time. College football on CBS. Here it's professional football at Soldier Field, Chicago. Four minutes, two seconds left to play. 23-14, Dallas leads the Bears. Rusty Litch. Jim McMahon looking on. That's about how the Cowboy, uh, the uh, Bears have been throwing the ball all day. That one looked like it just got away from Lish also. Here's Van Horn. He's not playing. He has something on his right leg there. He's a starting right tackle. Pulled a hamstring. Right, and he's talking to McMahon, who I know that hand has to be bothered. They, they said there's nothing for that. That hand has to be bothered. Lish going deep for tall. He might have it. There's your flag. Ron Fellows. And not much doubt about that one either. The ball was underthrown just a bit. It's hard to overthrow golf. I'll tell you, golf had Fellows beat, too. Had, had, had he been able, watch him here, Fellows is beaten right, right here. Had he been able to get the ball out in front, that would have been a touchdown for Willie Golf. But when Golf has to stop, to come back or wait for the ball, then Fellows runs into him. Not much way uh, Fellows could avoid that. Now, that's really the way to get a pass interference. Get him one-on-one, -on -one, get him deep and throw it short, and that will usually happen. You have a step on the guy, when you stop to come back, he will usually run into you. Well, again, John, as you said before, 
think back to just before the half and the fact that they weren't able to get the field goal off. And then again. I don't know. You know, there was some argument. Then the officials all had another huddle up. Maybe they're deciding whether that was interference or not. Now they're saying it was. 48-yard penalty. Getting back to the missed field goals. They do come back to haunt you when you get down there with so many chances and get nothing out of it. Right, and the Bears did that three times in this game. Just before the half, they let the clock run out on them, and then they missed two other field goals. And that will. They're just. They're a good team, but they're not that good. Not yet. Still in motion as Lish comes left. Dexter Klinkscale comes up with the ball and still on his feet is Klinkscale and now he goes down. Willie Golf, the intended receiver, Lish just let go of bad one. That was just a terrible throw because Willie Galt was open. He has him on a hook out here and he just throws the ball way over his head. Harold Carmichael couldn't have caught this one. Watch Klinkscale's just back there free. You see where Galt is open there? Look, he throws it way, way over his head right to Klinkscale. Watch the cut here. Here's Ron Fellows. He's worrying about him deep. Galt comes in here. He has him beaten. All you have to do is get the ball to him. Look, it's over his head. He doesn't even have a chance. So the Cowboys get the ball back at their own 13. 343 left to play. He figures out ways to win. This isn't his best Cowboy team, but they'll probably be 4-1 and one again after today. As Timmy Newsom and Tony Dorsett behind him. Makes the Dorsett, gets it out to Newsom. Newsom chased by Wilbur Marshall and brought out of bounds by Marshall. But he got enough, I believe, for a Cowboy first down. Yes, indeed he did. This is going to be something. You know, it's going to be a tough one for the Bears because there's a lot of questions. You know, Walter Payton uh, played so well in the first half, and then the second half, they just seemed to forget him. And, of course, that's going to be on one hand. And on the other hand, is going to be had four scoring opportunities. Threw an interception, let a clock run out, and missed two field goals. There will be some questions. Clock is stopped at 3.37 left to play now. And off is again to Newsom. He is hit solidly right at the line of scrimmage. Flag goes down. Mike Singletary made the hit that brought him down. I tell you, this Bear defense has done a good job. Really I mean, they are, they were rated number one coming into this game in all areas, and they've played well today. Against the Cowboys. They really have, particularly again against the run. Ogaboom has been able to move the Cowboys through the air. The Cowboys have, have yet to unleash Tony Dorsett. You know, he used to always have those 100-yard games. He hasn't had one yet this year. He has 17. Sportsmanlike, number 61. 28 yards. Jim Cooper. Now, what does an old right tackle do that's unsportsmanlike? Those guys are the most sportsmanlike guys there are. They don't do anything unsportsmanlike. Wonder what they caught him doing. Maybe he's just tired of not being recognized. First down, and they need 22 for a first down. Dorsett. He gets up to about the 16. Todd Bell made the stop, but the clock keeps running. That's one thing. Checking the timeout situation. Both teams have all three. Hey, you know, it's one thing about those offensive linemen. You know, they're up there in the front. No one ever talks about them until they get caught for holding or unsportsmanlike right. conduct. Yeah. No one even knows who Jim Cooper is. Ball dinger. Who are these guys? It's impossible to get dirty on this artificial turf, but Cooper is bloody. Screen pass to Dorsett. Cuts back inside, twists away from a couple. Gets out to about the 18. Just to update you while we have a moment on some of the other scores. New England 28, Jets 21, fourth quarter. 31-17, Indianapolis Colts over Buffalo, fourth quarter now. Kansas City 10, Cleveland 6, that's also in the fourth quarter. 
on the field. And Miami 36, St. Louis 21, fourth quarter. Dan Marino and his group of fine pass receivers having another big day. Timeout. All by the Bears. Let's see what has happened, just what John Madden was talking about a minute ago. This is a thing that has hurt them. Of course, they missed the two field goals. Then they had an interception when they got down there. And then just before the halftime, they let the clock run out. And when you're playing good defense and a ball control offense, you really can't have those things happen to you. Walter Payton carried the ball 20 times for 130 yards in the first half. Second half, he's carried the ball five times for 25 yards. So his total is 155 and 25 goes. So it's a good day for him. Great first half. Yeah, and you wonder why they got away from him, you know, especially so soon. I, I can see now at this point of the game that they would have to, but when they were six points down, uh, they could have kept working the ball to Peyton, I would feel. Of course, a full slate of games following this game here on CBS today, the Giants, Rams, Atlanta, San Francisco, Philadelphia at Washington, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Detroit will go out to San Diego, and New Orleans against Houston, that neighborhood rivalry. Here at Soldier Field, Dallas Cowboys 23, the Chicago Bears 14, with 2.47 left to play. A very, very exciting first half that settled down to two field goals in the second half. Dallas led 17-14 at the half. Donnelly comes wide to the right. Third down. They need about 15. Tenusa. Hit by Tyrone Keys. And in will come Danny White. Tyrone Keys has been doing a pretty good job over there. You know, he had a switch from, from the right side to the left side when Mike Hartenstein got hurt. Takes on the block, comes off the block, makes a tackle all by himself. That's pretty good for a defensive lineman. When you can take on a block, he takes on Jim Cooper, gets off the block, and makes a tackle. Especially when you're not used to that side. You change sides. Andy White's last punt was a great one. Out of bounds at the Bears three, and it really put him in a hole. Timeout. Chicago. They only have one left now. What they wanted to do is take that timeout before the two-minute warning and know that they'll get a timeout right after this play at change of possession. Then they'll get another timeout at the two-minute. So they really have three timeouts. That's the good news. The bad news is they're nine points down and they need two scores. Dallas three, Chicago one. Mike Ditka was talking about his Bear team yesterday saying that we've, we've got to get to the level of excellence of teams like the Raiders, like the Cowboys, the 49ers, the Dolphins. He said those guys, the coaches in those teams and the players on those teams know what they have to do to get to the Super Bowl, the playoffs, whatever. That tunnel vision he talked about. I want to ask you about that in a minute. Danny White standing at his own five. Fishing. There's the top pocket. Fisher has to let it bounce, and it takes a cowboy bounce. It turns out to be a heck of a punt. I'll tell you, that really hurt him, too, because that bounce lets the clock run down to two minutes, so they lose a timeout there. They'll get change of possession timeout and two-minute timeout at the same time. So it was a good thought, but it didn't quite work. Pat Summerall, John Madden, Soldier Field, Chicago. Where do you think the Bears are at this point, John? Well, the thing, I think they're an effective quarterback away from being a real good team. And uh, if and Jim McMahon has to be that quarterback because it's not Lish and it's not Avellini. It has to be a healthy Jim McMahon. And that's that's where they stand now. They have the defense, they have the running game, but they don't have the quarterback. Here's Lish under pressure. Gets away from it. And he's chased again. Gets away from it. Still, he gets out of the grass. Gets away from everything. And here goes Rusty Lynch. Got some room. Flag goes down. They're going to call it against Everson Wall. They said he tried to hit him in the head, I'm sure. Look at Randy White. Randy White's a competitor. 
It's not called on Randy White. It's called on Everson Wall. And instead of making the tackle, the watch him here. Instead of making the tackle, he just gives him a shot. And the shot must have been in the head. See, so he gets away there. He's still getting away. He picks up some good blocks. But he's going to get a good block right in here. Someone picked off too tall. Put the ball down. Now, watch right at the end here. Everson Walls, number 24, is going to come across to hit him, but he doesn't tackle him. He just gives him a shot, and it must have been in the head. Oh, right there, yeah. Lish out of the shotgun has Peyton wide open. And Peyton goes out of bounds. Dennis Thurman took it down. Got the clock stopped with a minute 16 left to play. Look at Peyton. He, he's there in the backfield, hands on his knees. He's just going to run a little hook pattern. He, he just runs up the field and stops, catches the ball, picks up the first down, then gets out of bounds. As the, the Bears only have one timeout left, and they need two scores. Now, if they fog down here, they would be better kicking the field goal here, going for the onside kick. First down. Not over yet. Here's Rusty Lich. He gets it to Dennis McKinnon. McKinnon gets inside the Dallas 10. Gets the first down. Dexter Clinkscale stops him. Clock running with just over a minute left to play now. Now they can't do like a minute. Oops, excuse me. They can't do like they did in the first half. This has to be a pass. They have to stop that oh. clock. Flags go down. They move too quickly. The Bears were out of sync. Number 74. Yeah, I saw Lish move uh, too quickly, but that's legal. The quarterback, of course, can move, but the offensive line can't. And they call that on Jim Covert, their left tackle. But again, the Bears being nine points down, they can't take all their time to get one score. They have to think in terms of two. I don't think if they don't get it on this play, it wouldn't be a bad move to kick a field goal here, then an onside kick and try and get the touchdown. He had Calvin Thomas at about the two. Michael Downs was close to him. Thomas couldn't hold on, and now we're down to 43 seconds left to play in the game. I would still do it. I would I would throw the ball in the end zone. See, because with one timeout, they really can't afford to throw it short and get tackled inbound. I think they have to direct all passes to the end zone and not take that much time. And if they don't get it, kick the field goal again, then the onside kick, then go for the seven. McMahon. We'll have Donald Jordan in the backfield. Hit hard by Dennis Thurman. The ball flies out of bounds, and that stops the clock. That was a smart play by Peyton. What he did, he was going to get tackled inbounds. And of course, that would keep the clock moving, so he just fumbled it out of bounds. He lost about a yard on the play, but that's okay. That'll bring up third down and 15 from the 15. time trying to get this one score 24 seconds and they take their last time out ladies and gentlemen the Bears thank you for attending today's game please check the seating area the executive producer of the NFL on CBS is Terry O'Neill senior producers Charles Milton the third this game produced by Bob Stinner Directed by Sandy Grossman. It's been a great day for a game, and the first half was as good as you'll ever see. This one has sort of settled down as time has passed. The rest of our crew, we thank you. Good day for sailing, and a good day for Cowboys in Chicago. Well, I'll tell you, this thing still isn't over. If they would kick a field goal here, I hate to keep saying this, and it's not second-guessing, but you do have to, when you're nine points down, you do have to think in terms of two scores. 
And I think it's just as bad when you waste all the time trying to get one as not getting it at all. They're out of timeouts. They do not have field goal in mind. They trail by nine points. Rusty Lish has been over to confer with Mike Ditka and staff. They say that Jim McMahon is not out because of physical problems. They just felt they needed to make a change. That remains to be seen. Rusty Lish from the five. It's fourth down. He goes in the corner. The receiver looked like he was in the end zone and then stepped back out to get the reception. It was Willie Golf. And he might have stepped down at about the one yard line. And Dallas takes over. It looked like he was on the goal line anyway. You see, he's right there. Now he has to know he has to get in the end zone. He starts to work back instead of just sitting right there. You see, he gets the ball and he comes back out. So they lost seven points. So the ball has to break the plane. It doesn't matter. And now they give the ball to Dallas at the two yard line. And all they have to do is sit on it now. 18 seconds left to play. Chicago had the ball. The Bears did for 35 minutes, 19 seconds of the game. So they felt they had to control the ball. They did that. But those missed scoring opportunities or what hurt Tom Landry got to be happy with the victory but wondering what he has to do to get that running game going we know he came in the game and the Cowboys were averaging 3.5 uh, per attempt running and he would like to be 4-3 and I think today they were probably less than 3.5 pretty sure you're right so the Cowboys do capture the victory and the Bears do put one in the W column Tom Landry walks away. Dallas wins it 23 to 14 for John. Opening moments of this ball game, the Atlanta Falcons have thrown a long.